Hello, everyone. Hello and welcome to Edge of Legend here on Nat20 Productions Official on Twitch. Let's get started with the hellos, meeting all these people here, and we'll go into the recap and just get right down to business. Start with Wes. Wes, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Hi, guys. I'm Wes. I play Dragon Targir, the Dustwalker Magnus, uh, the, the fireball-loving blue man, and uh, we're both he him. Nice. Well, next up, we got Sam. Sam, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Hello, I'm Sam, and I'm playing Ichipuk Tom Papakui, also known as La Pacifica Dorita, and our pronouns are she, her. Love it. And next up, we got Kylie. Please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Hi, I'm Kylie, or I go by Kai. It really doesn't matter at this point. I play Shiodabis, the Elven Ranger. We both go by she, her. Nice. Well, uh, next up, we got Sydney. Sydney, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Yeah, hello. <laughs> My name is Sydney. I play Alona, the half-elf cloistered cleric, and both of our pronouns are she, her. Nice. Well, that just leaves little old me. My name is PJ. I am the GM for Nat20 Productions Official here on Twitch and Edge of Legend tonight. My pronouns are he, him, and I'll be playing everyone and everything in between. And if you didn't catch last week's episode, it was it was freaking bonkers, to say the least. Uh, recap, if I can, if you haven't seen the recap after this show, go to our YouTube, Nat20 Prods, and go see Randy do an awesome recap. Uh, speaking of which, Randy will not be joining us this evening. Uh, they're taking a night off for their health. We wish them well. We can't wait to see them next week. And, uh, yeah, please rest up, my guy. But nonetheless, go see Randy do our, uh, recap. What happened? Holy moly. So it started off where they found a dead Matori with a giant handprint burning almost through her entire body. She is dead. And Arbod pops up, the guy they've been told about by Tanine. And I thought my phone was on mute. And uh, it's it's so bad. It's the only time it's never been muted during show. Uh, the guy they've been warned about uh, a little bit. And here he is. And we roll initiative. We get into a fight. And, and Dragon and Arbod just crit each other at the same time. Um, and it's bananas. I believe, Wes, you did about 272 damage. And Arbod did like 215 damage. And and then you both just went bleh. Just like that. <laughs> That's very accurate. And then other people went bleh. <laughs> yeah. And then the chain lightning effect from Arbod's spell strike uh, hits uh, the druid, and I think I think it was the druid because you were out of range. It it, it nicked you, yeah. and yeah. and Lothier, Alona was saved by the druid. Lothier, yeah, Lothier jumped in front of the um, lightning bolt in his T Rex form and absorbed all of Alona's hit, so it ended up killing Lothier as well. Yep, and so in a panic. Um, so Alona starts to bring back from the dead through healing, uh, Dragon, Lothir, healing Shionibus, and they all start having this, like, we gotta get the hell out of here. Uh, they did, but just before they did, uh, Dragon got the idea to chop off Arbod's arm as the hand had a big green sheen to it that was basically the reason that Matori was killed so terribly. Uh, and they took this floppity arm back to Isawo's house where they wrapped it up and made sure it's very secure. And then they realized, well, if Matori's dead, uh, Xiang Long is exposed and alone. Someone's got to tell him, someone's got to check up on him. And, and Shionibus decides to go do that alone to the mausoleum, only to find a arm missing Arbod who puts her in a, a headlock and, and threatens her life in exchange for his own safety and information as to what he's planning on doing. She acquiesces and he says basically he's going to find the Blade of the War King, the, the sword slash spear that Koriko's had all the way in season one, buried somewhere sunken on the southeast coastline of Adolphon's prime continent. And in doing so, she let him go. He vanished in the night. And eventually they met up with Xiong Long and Tanin and everyone in the mausoleum. 
uh, had a very emotional moment. Uh, this was after, of course, the ghosts in the mausoleum got stirred up by the spirit of Prodidamat because Shonibis was provoking them. It was a, it was a lot. And then we all came back. It, Shonibis was provoking Prodidamat. Prodidamat was being a, 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 a snooty head. We're not quite at swear o'clock yet, but it was a complicated conversation. Uh, he was kind of being a jerk. He was being a. T- I mean, it's Prodidamite. The D. He's the the uh, lesser uh, dragon god of betrayal. You know. Um, and so everyone got back to their mausoleum, exchanged some very heartfelt uh, words, and then as they were leaving, we had a level seven hype train. And I thought, what better time than now? Valain Tarsian makes his dashing uh, entrance as he is now here, and this is where we're opening up at the house of Isowo to discuss um, what to do about the trees of life and the seeds that exist as Valain Tarasian is desperate for a solution and Shunvis just might have the answer. So here we are opening up on Isowo's house with uh, the very, very, very old elf, a very exhausted old elf uh, talking about trees. And let's not forget he's on some crazy energy drinks right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, Valain Tarsian hasn't slept since the Great Dragon War, so that's been about almost 5,000 years plus, so he is seriously hooked to energy drinks. Upsetting. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh! Oh, who's gonna break it to him? The coffee is outlawed! <laughs> Caffeine! He didn't he drink coffee, Caffeine though. is outlawed! That makes Caffeine it even outlawed. worse! Not just coffee! But his energy drinks as well. But well, at least Dragon suspects that those aren't energy drinks or caffeine that he's uh, he's chugging. I mean, I'm not going to give it up either way. I'll just say this. It's fantasy. <laughs> and sometimes you create an alchemical potion that gives you energy. Um, that's, a one, that's one way to say it. <laughs> and that's all we're going to look into this. I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, so there you are in Isuo's house, and let's pick up right from there. So, like everyone always asks, the big question, what do you do? We did take a nap, correct? <laughs> um, we haven't taken a nap yet, but we should take a nap. I mean, do you want to take a nap now, or do you want to take a nap after? I don't think the the guy that just poofed out of thin air is going to let us take a nap until we answer a lot of his questions. So how about we handle him first, Fair. send him away, and then we pass out. I mean, technically you guys healed me to full, so I'm only missing one spell slot at this point. That's a good point. It's <laughs> true. Okay. What does he want? Shionavis, you're <laughs> you handle this one. No! <laughs> you handle no! this is your monkeys. This is your circus. <laughs> Listen. You guys are my monkeys and you guys are my circus. That's how I feel most sessions. That's true. <laughs> yeah. As Dragon sits down on like a couch or something, you just hear like his uh, back cracking and all of his joints groan after that getting smacked so hard, just like Ugh sips tea and stares right at Chionibus. <laughs> All right, so what can I help you with? Like, what, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. Seems like you haven't slept in eons. Uh, um, about, about five, five millennia, give or take, yes. Well, you see, uh, I've been researching for the past thousand years the trees. Um, I was part of one of three organizations uh, who was tasked with the job of finding a solution to the whole trees of life conundrum. Um, I was particularly in the organization whose job it was, was to find compromise. Um, we could not find one, at least not before things got dire. So I, I, I've been trying to find n- new, new resolutions. And, and you said you've, you found some seeds. Do you, you know, there's a tree, you know, about the tree in Shin, the one that's killing potentially Salvamat. Are there any other trees in, in, in the, in the world that I'm aware of or unaware of? I've 
feel like there are, but uh, where? I, I don't know for sure, but I feel like they're, I feel like I've read somewhere, somewhere that said there's somewhere. Question. Um, so the tree of life in Shin is draining the energy of a god, right? Yes, absolutely. And it, like the bones of a god? Uh, the, 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 the spirit essence, the blood, soul, I don't know. It's, 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 it's a tomato, potato, potato, tomato. It's all things. Okay, well, why don't we combine two problems together and plant one of the trees in Koromot's bones and drain all of his energy? Well, if there's energy in his bones, you might be able to do that. I don't know if his bones have energy. Maybe. Um, are you alternatively suggesting we put a tree of life on top of the soul well in the realm of the dead? Oh, my goodness. I mean, that would... I didn't think about that. It was more in the crypt that we, you know, visited. But, I mean, yeah, I guess that could potentially work too, though that may open up a whole host of other problems. I'm not... I, I don't really know. Yes. You, you, yeah, you, you, you see magic, uh, especially uh, uh, gene-based magic, uh, fae magic, it, it reflects its environment. If um, yeah. if a tree is, is in Salvamat, then perhaps the elves and fae creatures born from that tree would reflect Salvamat in some way. Uh, maybe they would have more Chinese traits, or maybe they would be very sturdy. I, I don't know. But what I do know is that if you stick a tree of life into the well of souls of death, I, I don't know what you would create. Living undeath? Undead elves? Possibly. You could make a bunch of me. No, I was gonna say. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. That's probably a really. That sounds like a really cool statement. I'm not. I'm not saying it's a good idea, but it sounds pretty fucking metal. A bunch of well, dust walker yeah. elves. That'd be well, kind of cool. Not necessarily a bad thing. However, since um, can't remember his name down now. The only name that comes to mind is Bone Daddy. Um, since Bone Daddy <laughs> rules over the soul well. I guarantee that if we put a seed in the soul well, he would have dominion over those elves, and therefore we would just be giving him more forces. Really not great. I really yeah. don't want to do that to, to beings that have not been brought to life yet, you that's know? Fa that's fair. Okay, so yeah. again, New okay. Jack City. Two problems again. So it could solve each other. We just drain all the magic out of the area, and we solve New Jack City's problem of dealing with dangerous magic, and we solve the other problem of the Tree of Life draining life from other things. It would just drain the magic, right? I really don't know what, what I'm talking about. I'm just making suggestions. You guys say the Tree of Life drains energy, and there's a lot of magic energy there. I'm just... Say less, uh, look. Well, what about if we planted it in Molly Moss? Wouldn't it balance it out between the magic and non magic? But mm, in Molly Moss, well, uh, no, because it's still it's still this realm and it's still an Adelphon. It would just take the life from Adelphon. Um. However. However. If we could find a place like that in the world, I think that would be worth it to plant it there. We just, of course, as we're discovering, have to put it in a not problematic place as to not create more problems than we can solve. I mean, we're even worth, I mean, we're theorizing about this. We don't even have the seed yet. Well, that and you know it doesn't really matter what we do with any of the seeds that we find if we don't stop the end of the world a good yeah. point shonibus did anything in the research give um suggestions as to where the seeds are like exact locations or just that they exist I take out that whole notebook I copied. PJ, is there anything in there saying that they're somewhere? 
Oh, from uh, 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 Emmerich's place? Yeah, yeah. Would he? No, he definitely would. All right, yeah. Uh, so you see a handful of locations, uh, coordinates. Um, one, of course, mentions the tree that's currently in Shin. One that mentions the tree underground in Osmocon. Um, and you see a, a sub-note, it's connected to the body of a celestial. Um, which is why you have El Milagro, El Milagro, the miracle, as his name is, the uh, Asmar elf that came from underground in Osmocon. Um, there is one seed that has since been proven fake in one of the planes of the dead and there is one seed that has been lost in uh, a, a, a pocket of space out of time and reality uh, said that a trickster put it there um, and I believe I believe there is one more seed but even my own memory is kind of forgetting where that thing was oh, that's fair I want to say in Shellator, but no. let me let me double check on that. Wait, you, you, wait, you did somebody actually say in Shellator? Oh yeah, I, I said there might be a seed in in Shellator, but I need to double check my notes on that. Okay, I, I meant in character. Did anybody? Oh, say Oh, in, in character. No, yeah. I don't know. Okay, it's cause... it's in the book of notes that Kylie is looking at. Because the first instinct Dragon would have about hearing in Shellator is, "Where's my damn rock?" <laughs> Yeah, immediate, immediate. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, we should not give a demon-worshipping cult city the power of um, Ephendal life. No, 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 no. No. Ephendal. Mm. Elven life, what the fuck? <laughs> um, all right, so why don't we, like, make a list of all the problems that we have? I know that that, that might take more time just writing them out um, than we currently have to do all of the tasks, but... I still vote that we should kill the sleepy demon first because it's on its way to Dragon's Grave and would kill everyone here. Hmm. Okay. It's like a plan. Can you do that? Can you say that one more time? What? Can you say that one more time to make sure that I heard you? Yeah. Go kill sleep demon. Kill sleep demon. Big before it kills everyone in Dragon's Grave. Before it kills everyone in Dragon's Grave. This is great. Um, out of character, my one plan is to, if there is a seed that this man could get, that we send him away again to go get other forces that are not us to get this seed while we take care of other things that need to happen. Well, so us. here's the thing. If we do want to send him in a group of, like, essentially researchers, mm -hmm. like, we can grab people from the north. Mm -hmm. Tezuku, Nubia, yeah. easily. <gasps> Wait, are you saying that we're gonna have like a si an entire side squad of a of elves that are just gonna be like Ocean's Eleven? A what? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no, Alona, it was called it Eleven like, Oceans. Sorry, Eleven Oceans. Yeah. Oh, it was this about the pirates, place. right? Yeah, it was like yeah, a heist yeah. play about pirates that was running. Uh, it was pretty popular. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I heard about that. I never got to see the play, though. Mm, that was good. Um, so I, I'm just going to put this out there. I'm not going to say when. I'm not going to say how. If we get if we get a really good uh, hype train sometime in the next couple of weeks, who knows? But I just made a big note for seed heist one shot. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Eleven oceans. <laughs> mm -hmm. Eleven elves, but only five showed up. <laughs> I, I mean, I was also going to suggest that we, you know, hire Tobias's girlfriend's mercenary company to go along with them as protection. It's true. Not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. It's not. And we then... could also hire Hera to go get the sleep demon, but I know, I know, Shonibus wants to handle that personally. I gotta kill him myself. Uh, oh, I gotta oh, make no. Grandma proud. I mean, no, also, no. how how would we explain to Tobias that we got his girlfriend murdered by a sleep demon? These things happen. I'm sure that's, that's his exact mentality. Like, 
Oh, oh, she died. Uh, sleep demon. Bet. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll mourn her later. Um. Okay. So. PJ, is there a seed in Shalator? Uh. Ah, uh, we will find out. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, in that case, my proposition as Alona is. We have this much information. We have a theory that there is another one out there. If Valaine wants to come up with a group of people, as Shunaba suggested, from all over the elven nations and get a team together and they can go investigate each and every tree that is alive, each and every seed that possibly exists, even the fake one in the realm of death, um, and get like a super team together. Um, we could send them out to do that while we focus on saving the world overall. Okay. Um, let's see how effective three quarters of this plan is going to be. Let's make one big diplomacy check. See, one, two, three, four, your level nine average of that is okay. I want you all, the DC is going to be. 90. Um, Group DC. I would like to say that I'm untrained in 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 that in diplomacy. In diplomacy. Isn't Sorry, Ichi, you have I think this is Ichi and Kylie's uh and Shinobis's thing, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Eat. yeah. Besides, you still have uh, untrained oh, improvisation, right? That? Yeah. That's a twenty six. Yeah. See, that's really good. That's really good. Let me get my calculator and start getting down everyone's uh, digis on this. So 26. 24. 24. Okay. So together we got we got 50. That's good. Already, yeah, I'm already about halfway there. 29. 29. And I think it was a 13. I accidentally moved it with my hand, so it could have been an 18. My bad, guys. I think I think we're doing good. Yeah. yeah, I think we're doing all right. Maybe knock on wood, knock on wood, knock Wait, on wood. Wait, has a 16 in diplomacy? I'm an expert, yo. 13. You don't okay. use it. She doesn't use it very often. <laughs> nope. <laughs> What'd you so, say? She absolutely does not. Oh, I just, sorry, it took me a while. I forgot to put my character sheet beforehand. Um, I rolled a five on the die face. And my diplomacy is plus 14. That's a 19. Ooh. 19. Ooh. That is a total of 98. Hey! Just <laughs> made it. Just made it. Amazing. Love this for us. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So really fast. Uh, not that I'm going to narrate all this right now, but I want to know how... So you, first of all, you succeed in giving Valaine, um the inspiration to do this task mm -hmm. uh which means it's gonna happen the man is over ten thousand years old if he puts his mind to something it freaking happens so what were the exact notes he wanted to get teams together to do what um get the ocean the, the get the love the 11 oceans together one from every nation and and go inspect the trees and find the seeds and gather more information because now we know for sure that they definitely exist and we should really in like research this and stuff. Okay. Please. Out of oh, cool. curiosity, from Dragon's time as the god of like harvests and things, is there anything I could glean to help with this side quest? Is there a role I can make? Oh, that's a very good point. Um, survival. Survival. Okay, all right. Well, it's not my worst skill, but it's also not my best. But let's find out. <clears throat> With advantage? Great. <laughs> I was a god. I'll say a plus four. Okay, Ayo. all right, all right. So it's a 26 with the plus four. 26. Hey! Ayo. Hell yeah. Did I uh, miss when you were a god? When we were all gods? Oh, our god party? Yeah. Our, god wait, party. no. No. Oh no, no this no, is no, when no, you no, were no, no. you were Koga. 
The yeah. big cold guy. Oh, so strong. Okay, that. Okay. I thought oh, you just meant like episode. Dragon was just a god once. Like, that's kind of what yeah, I thought you meant. Yeah, no, it just <laughs> happens, you know, from time to time. Dragon <laughs> likes to be a god. I mean, <laughs> now he's a god with a gun. For us. <laughs> so, uh, what you know from your time kind of bonded with, with um, Isla is that. Um, You know that these seeds don't function like any seeds you've ever experienced. They still have to take root in something and get nutrients from something, but they're not a conventional seed. Firstly, they're huge. They're about the size of a human torso, if not bigger, and they have unusual tubes kind of coming out of them. They're also fey, and so the logic of how they work is temperamental and capricious at best. Um... You know that unlike most seeds, they don't die in weather conditions. They adapt, actually, to their, to any weather condition. I mean, hell, you have the hot deserts of uh, Nubia. You have the, the uh, ice-cold north, and you have the very uh, fertile plains of Acadia. And the trees were thriving in every single one of them. Uh, if you're looking for something specific, let me know. Other than that, yeah, Isla's just going, like, yeah, it's it was, fate bullshit. M- okay, because I was going to say more more along the lines of like where a specific location, like down to the coordinates of one would be, or oh. like something along those lines. If it was like, uh, oh, this is some fate bullshit, like I, <laughs> I know where this is, but ah. That, that's Fabius over there. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, Isla doesn't really have that information. A lot of the gods don't. Um, if you remember Ra's Rave Party, gods' relationships with the seeds is very uh, powerful and awe-inspiring. It's still kind of alien to uh, to them. Got it. Okay. Does that make sense? Hmm. Yes. And the Fae themselves are like, yeah, hey, it's a seed. It's whatever, mate. Well, what's wrong? <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> so that being said uh Villane excitedly um leaves he walks out Isabel's front door and you see him kind of turn into a spear of light vanish high in the sky and what you don't see happening for the next however many weeks months it takes is a rigorous an avengers initiative-esque montage of him finding elves from around the world who have somehow survived the pruning and he's like, you know, there's an idea that a group of like-minded elves can accomplish anything. And they're just like, yes, sir. And they're going off to go do the impossible. And one day, I'm not promising when, we'll see one of those operations as Seed Heist goes off and a group of elves go and get one of the last known seeds on this plane of existence. It's been, I know it's been over in 10 minutes, so get that fucking hype train going! <laughs> <laughs> That's right. If you get that hype up to five, my hands are tied. It's like, well, I guess I know where the one shots are running in 2023. Uh, I love but, that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So with that done, Valaine on reinvigoration and on the prowl, he is definitely doing the work. What are you all going to be doing next? Real quick. I've got the name of this. Ocean's Elven. Ocean's oh, Elven. Oh, you should. Hold on. Up. I'm right doing that. <laughs> I'm oh, writing it down. God. Ocean's Elven. Ocean's oh, Elven. God. Sorry. You get a hero point. God damn it. I love that. Yes! So yeah, that was too good. That was way Thank too you. good. That's too good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. Now, well, now that that's taken care of, uh, we should handle the sleep demon that's coming to murder everybody but first a nap please a sure, nap. sure sure now yeah. really fast i want to make sure i go the rules for resting and how that affects your healing it's not full hp just because you slept it is your con modifier multiplied by your level back in hp so mm-hmm. level nine so if your con modifier is a four nine times four yada yada so if you have any skills you want to roll before you go to bed or any spells you want to expend before you go to bed now is a good time to hedge your bets i mean i saw him go to bed yeah okay i was gonna say dragon it was already healed back to full life so realistically i'm getting a spell slot back 
but you, but you'll definitely see Dragon uh, with the book that he stole from the library of like powerful spells, and he's just studying it. You stole a book from the library? No. Clo closes it and puts <laughs> it back in his satchel. No? What do you mean? I didn't have... I, you don't read. What do you mean? I read all the time. I do magic. How do you think I learn it? I don't know. I've never seen you read before. I do it in private. Just because you haven't seen someone read doesn't mean that they can. Yeah, that's rude. I'm also, we've yeah, been kind of busy... We've had time to read Smut. <laughs> it's creative literature. All right. Mm -hmm. You're right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're right. Just you so you know. Sorry. You're, you are correct. I'm, Show I'm some correct. respect. I, I gotta ask now. Did you really think I couldn't read? No, uh, I knew you could read. I just said, I didn't say you couldn't. I said you don't. How do you think I get any new spells? I don't, I don't know your life, Dragon. It did just have like a magical vibe. I don't well, read you. and get my spells. I get my spells from my God. I don't know how you get your spells. I don't read and get my spells. I don't get spells. That's, that's I see dead fair. people. Oh yeah, she's that's just gonna happen to me magic. now too. Oh. Right. On a scale of one to ten, how disturbing is that whole thing? Seeing dead people? Yeah. Uh I mean like it's fine. She only just looks at Ichi like I would say it depends on the day. Yeah. Okay. PJ, are there dead people here right now? None in Iswo's hut. Outside in the city? Yes. I'm gonna poke my face out the door. Just see some undead like some ghost walking by like, Oh, hi! Oh, hi! Bye! Just kind of walks away. I stick my face back in the door. Yeah, they're out there. All the time. Okay. Hi to you. That'll be you next, Dragon. You'll be able to see him like us. Yippee. Super exciting. Wow. Man, now I kind of feel left out. Well, no, you'll oh, still have, I shouldn't say uh, that. Oh, if you keep going down the same path you're going, you'll see a lot of dead people. <laughs> Stay in the back! <laughs> <laughs> I'm never in the front! <laughs> Lord, it goes to bed! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Alright, so everyone goes to bed, you take a long rest, uh, you get your full 48 hours. Um, yeah, you got your spells back, you recover whatever's left, uh, and then you have the new day to Go out and do your thing. Uh, obviously, when you wake up, there's like a nice warm plate of breakfast for each of you with a choice of coffee, tea, juice, and water. Um, a breakfast that seems handmade for you by Isuo. And a little letter to just, you know, a little note that says, proud of you, kiddos. Do well out there. Yay. Yeah. And is that, a, is that a, you know we're going to do well or like you're giving us pumped up because it's going to be really freaking hard. It, the letter does not expand upon that. It's just like, it's like a, have a good day at school. I'm not saying you're going to. I hope you have a good day at school. Okay. Well, we have to go kill the demon now. Yep, just another Wait. day. Saving the world. I don't wanna, I don't Yay. wanna kill him. Last time we almost, we almost died. I don't wanna die again. I, uh, yeah, but th for this one we can actually do some, like, prep. It's not like we just met in the middle of the street and, you know, uh, nearly died. That's yeah. true. Um, guys. Yeah. Yeah. PJ, is it morning? 
It is morning now, yes. Do you think... Do you think a sleep demon's out right now, guys? People nap. Yeah! But that's not, like, sleeping. That's napping. Oh. But wouldn't now be a good time to get it because there's not really many people sleeping? If we can find it. Well, like, what's is your it only, like, you, like I don't know. I'm just thinking, things? is it only present during the day? Like, does it go back to one of the nine hells at night? I don't know this thing's life. Well, Much like you don't know dragons, apparently. Listen, yeah. don't come for me in my one assumption. I get one. What? <laughs> You know what? what they say about assuming? Make an ass out of you and me. Yep. Oh, I I thought you were going to say it's like a souping, but with less soup. No. No. No? Mm hmm Oh, okay. Well. And now I kind of want a soup. Me too. Uh, Shiana, but if, so do you only get a name? You don't get any intel on the demons you're supposed to take down? <laughs> absolutely not no i just get a name and a lot of the times honestly that was just a lucky guess when i asked who it was i didn't even know this demon had a name until i guessed you just kind of knew yeah it was weird okay um well do you think you can poke your aunt and ask I mean, if I have to, I will. I, if I have to, I will. Well, yeah, just... We're trying to help you. Just poke your aunt. Just send her a letter. She's nice. She's nice. You got a thing. You. She's nice to you because you don't live with her. Okay, fine. Okay, whatever. Whatever. I'll give her a call and we'll we'll find out. Okay? I guess I'll I guess I'll send a scarab to my aunt. Alright, what do you say? Good morning! Exclamation point. <laughs> so this sleep demon thing is there any tidbits you have for me in a way of assisting? Also, Alona says hi. Also, Alona says hi. And Dragon, you don't know me, but I'm saying hi anyway. I want to say hi too. I just imagine this is like a voice memo and you just hear everyone in the background. So you see uh, as the scarab like kind of flitters and it almost like separates and this like golden light connects the two and in the middle kind of fizzing in to view, you see your aunt with a giant mug. This is my giant mug. It's clearly not your aunt's. And uh, she's kind of sipping it in the morning kind of looking at the sun. Oh, oh, you're up early. Pleasure. Oh, uh, sleeping demon, sleeping the, um, I'm so sorry. Something about the, the list we gave you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, oh, hello, uh, uh, Alona, great to see you. And, and Ichi, it's a pleasure again. Um, I don't know you, Dragon. I don't know you, but it's nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yes. Um. Yeah, the sleeping dog. Oh yes, yes, yes. That one's really tricky. Um, he just kind of travels everywhere and goes to sleep and forces people around him to go to sleep, and then they just sleep until they die of starvation and dehydration. Or sometimes he likes to feed off their dreams. When people sleep around him, it also feeds him. He eats from their mind. He'll come at you like, uh, like a vagrant or a vagabond, someone who's tired and dirty, 
and just wants to be left alone. But that's a disguise. The minute he actually falls asleep near you or tries to force you to fall asleep, he's already got you. And for creatures that don't need sleep, what happens? Oh, he's repelled by them. He can't stand them. Where did your elf right. friend go? He he floated into golden dust. I have a feeling that's actually him. No, I, I meant I like we could him. use him and just walk him around the city, and he hasn't slept in hundreds oh, of years. True. And he, the, he I'd say just give out. coffee to Ichi. Oh, that's fair. Mm-hmm. Like a massive cup of espresso. Mm-hmm. We do have the beans. Also, if we're in Isuo's house, is the caffeine still illegal? Um, it is because their house is simultaneously in every single major nation in the world, but they don't give a crap. They have coffee. You can't stop them. I love it here. So, other than someone who can't sleep or dream or whatever, is there anything else that we need to be aware of? Like, does he sleep during the day? Is he always awake? Like, what? <gasps> does the, 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 do you think the sleep demon has something to do with the outlawing of caffeine? That would make sense. Without caffeine, people have to sleep more. Yeah. I should have known this thing was in the government. Should have known. A conspiracy! I knew it. I knew it. I. It's wrong. Oh. Oh. Well, now we have to kill it. For right. sure. Not like we were considering that we weren't going to, but now we have to. Got a vendetta. I mean, it's not confirmed, but I'm just... Why else? Why else would you someone do such a thing? It's true. It's quite evil. Mm. Disgusting, really. Terrible. Okay. Um, Shunabus, do you have like a, do you have a demon sense? Like, does, does the back of your neck start to tingle when there's a demon around? PJ, do I have a demon sense? Like, does the back of my neck start to tingle when there's a demon around? <laughs> No, not entirely, but you do have a, um, the, the list you have does act like a radar when you're nearby. Oh, sick. Oh. Yeah. Cause that's how you found the liar's joke in Enchelator. Um... Like you got near him and it was like, bring like gold light. Your quest. Yeah. <laughs> Exclamation point. Question mark. <laughs> uh, no, I don't have this sense, but like, if I have this note around, then like. I'll know where they are. So we're just gonna walk around the city with this note out? I mean... I guess, and if anyone looks like they're really tired or needing sleep, then I guess we'll know who to look for. We should check on when, like, the demon was last seen. Like, how close they are to the city, because we actually don't know if they're in the city yet. Do we? I thought they were in the city. They were getting closer to the city, but I don't know if they've made it in the city. That was also, that was a night ago, so I'm not sure. PJ, is there a way to tell how close the demon is to the city? Well, you can use spells to try and locate them, uh, since you have at least a name and an understanding of what this person slash demon mm -hmm. looks like, um, or at least what they are. You can use uh, survival to track them, mm. uh, and you get bonuses from the golden leaflet that you have, Shonibus. Um, yeah, I think that's it so far. I think that's it for now. I'm down to just start doing survival checks to find this thing. Is anyone I'm else that. good at survival? Could I, where did we hear about this anyway? So we could always just ask around where the last people that have fallen asleep and haven't woken up are, and we can get a general sense of... Isolo told us that this thing was coming closer to town. Did they give us a direction? No. Great. Uh, okay. Survival checks. <laughs> Look, I'm a little bit good at it. I'll roll two. See what happens. Um... 
Thank you. Um, Miss Nasari, Nasari, appreciate you. Thank you so much. And keep to your studies. Never hurts to be a smart girl, smarter than any, anyone else in the room. And I look forward to seeing what you learn. Ah. Oh. That's a nat 20 for my survival check. Ba, ba, Ooh, ba, ba, nice. Ba, 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 ba. First one of the night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I used it for a survival check and not for a combat, which sucks. <laughs> <laughs> for you, it sucks. I'm happy. That's fair. <laughs> Did we... You mean Roll. you don't want it to just die on one attack? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to see there were 272 damage again. That, that hurts my soul. 262. No, oh, it was 72, because I remember I forgot to roll two damage dice. Oh my god. Yeah, I was <laughs> rolling traits in your weapon, I think. Something like that. Yeah, it was my two roots. <laughs> <laughs> All so right. Silly. So, um, you check with Iswo. They tell you that uh, they should be coming in from the west. Uh, as you leave the west and start tracking and getting rumors from the city, you're able to put out that um, the sleeping dog is approximately a couple hours west from the west gates. If you leave, you can intercept them and they will be nowhere near your city. That's great. Let's do that. We don't want them we don't want them close. Okay. Yeah, I can't do a whole lot of damage when they're in within a city wall. Yeah. Um, are you sure? Because you definitely did last night. You did a you did a lot of damage. Yeah, but it was less damage that I could have done. I just didn't want to blow up the whole town. Oh, <laughs> it's true. Uh, all right. So after a, a while of tracking, you finally get to what you believe is a good location to the west uh, outside from town, a nice open part of the forest and pounded dirt road that led to what used to be smaller villages on the west uh, fringes on this side of the continent shelf. Um. What are you doing exactly now that you've kind of found a good position? Are you waiting an ambush? Are you just kind of chilling and waiting? What's what's the plan? Let's let's do some yeah, let's do some planning for an ambush. What would we roll for that to give us bonuses in this battle? Well, you can roll uh, stealth. You can roll uh, deception. You can roll survival whatever whatever role would be clandestine enough to either you know ha have an ambush in some way that works for you religion think of the mormons stealth <laughs> what does that mean think of the mormons religious ambush religious ambush they come to your home i I'm trying to stat that. No, Have you God. heard of our oh, Lord and Savior defeating the sleep demon? <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard the good word of sneak attack? <laughs> it could work. It could work. Um, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Um, you can make a religion check. It'll have effects, but it won't be stealth in nature. Oh, I don't need that. That's fine. Okay. I just, like, it's religion, so I'll know more about the demons. How to best capture demons, I suppose, because demons are a religion no, in this world. No. no. Worship mm -hmm. demons. Not doing it. Not doing it. Not making the next roll. It's fine. I'm going to use a hero point. I was going to, but then I was like, ooh, but combat with a powerful sleep demon. Yeah. Well, I rolled like shit anyway, but my religion modifier is dummy thick, so it's a 25. 25. I got okay. 21 on stealth. 21, which is not great. But I'd rather have my hero points for combat. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Kylie, what was yours? So, question. Mm -hmm. Can I buy a horse before we leave? Yeah, I can. I can let that happen. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. That means deception is a 34. Well, I'm I'm curious. Why does the horse make deception thirty four? Well, no, because I was just like, oh, like deception. I can be the distraction because I can't sleep. I mean, I don't sleep, so yeah. I can be like, oh my gosh, I'm just tying up my horse here. I'm just this wanderer, just on the trail. That's why I wanted a horse. Oh, make okay. 
But we okay. Know. You've also, learned from Ichi well. Afterwards, horse girl shenanigans. Yes, horse girl shenanigans. That's the best kind. Uh, Sam, what was what was yours again? Um, I can I roll gladiatorial lore to kind of like scope this situ this ambush out in terms of my knowledge of the gladiatorial ring. <laughs> You know, yeah, I'll allow that. You're looking at your environment. You're trying to scope out, like... Yeah, like, I know there's no chairs here, but if there was something like a chair to smash over his head, what would it be? Wait, do we still have the electric chair? I believe what? you do. Oh, shit. Yes. What? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, in season one, they did some Ichi uh, uh, backstory side quest, and they went to Osmocon for Ultima Lucha. Uh, kind of like their big, their big WrestleMania, and one of the one of the magical items they got was the most electrifying chair in sports entertainment. They have an actual folded chair that deals shocking damage, and if you unfold it and jump off the lid, you turn into a lightning bolt yourself. <laughs> yep. Great. That, I mean good. that and the boots of ass kicking or whatever the bully boot. Like you guys bully got some boot. like hilarious items in season one. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, glorious. So. Yeah. For that, I did roll a 28, so. Okay. So you, you're you finding that this is a, a nice wide open space with trees and rocks. The closest thing to a chair to smash would be this nice big boulder. Um, but once you smash that boulder down, it's all, it's all just full combat going right into it. All right. I relayed hey, this information. Yeah? That's a nice boulder. That's a nice boulder. You thinking what I'm thinking? No. Boulder stuff. Maybe. <laughs> I'm giving you, you two hero points. Right. <laughs> That's amazing. You two get hero points. That's amazing. That's a nice boulder. Boulder, boulder stuff. Like, <laughs> just kills me. All right. Yay. All righty, righty, Rue. So. Um, Alona, your religion check. You want to learn anything about this demon, or are you doing this for like distraction purposes? Learning the demon's weaknesses. You okay. Okay, I'll give you a hint. So it's a demon, so it usually succumbs to the same weaknesses most demons have, and you can probably take a good guess of what that is, but it's also a sleeping base demon and what does someone who's trying to sleep really hate to be woken up by the sun Light. and noise think noise. about that think about that last one all right so uh wes uh-huh you're trying to hide and you're doing a really good job of hiding your your great sword tank rifle however is not it, it's most it's it's less hiding and more setting up in a position far away to hit this guy before he has a time to react i'm using my sniper rifle to snipe Ooh. okay okay cool 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 all right so and i'm preparing a round with a heightened two fireball because if there's anything a tired person would hate it's oh. loud noises and light Oh, no. Okay. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So All right, fine. I'm, I'm uh, prepping that in advance. <laughs> so, you're in your positions, you have your knowledge, you're doing your thing. Kylie, you're, you're kind of brushing your horse. You feel... You know that feeling when you suddenly become aware of how tired you are? Like, you were just, like, riding high and suddenly you're like... Oh, wow. Huh. That sensation starts to kind of fade in. You can almost feel it, kind of feel it fading in through your eyes a bit. And then you hear this voice. I'm terribly sorry. Your, your lovely horse is it's in my way. I'm gonna look around my horse. Do I see this person? This thing? This entity? You see what looks like a human being, maybe no 
like about 411 to 52 hunched over with a green cloak and hoodie tattered ragged clothes no shoes a walking stick uh and like just a bunch of blankets hanging from a belt wrapped around its waist and there's the voice no need to be sorry i just need to get by your horse then walk around it's very large and i am very tired could you maybe just move out of the road a little bit i am going to go around my horse and just kind of like move it just slightly out of the way just enough so this person can get by but i want them to absolutely know that i am an elf okay um so as you do all that uh i need a will save from you Cool, 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 cool. Right on, right on. Where is where? Okay, so Dragon is prepped up on a hill, like prone, like ready to fire, but he's waiting for any confirmation that this is just not an old man walking. Yeah, same. <laughs> where is everybody else? Well, Alona can't be in the front, so she's behind Dragon. <laughs> Good. I'm, gonna I'm, use... I'm by the boulder. I used a hero point because that's good, but it could be better. Okay. And it was better, and that makes it a 34 willpower. 34 willpower. Okay. <laughs> you become very aware that there is a presence trying to force you to sleep, to to sap you of your will and, and your focus, and it is emanating like a, like a congo or stench on day three. It is emanating from this person and you can tell that it's just nagging like it's trying to get its claws into you is dragon behind me in a tree i mean to him. i would have imagined that we would have discussed some sort of signal that's why i'm gonna see if you're yeah. behind me yeah he he would be somewhere and he would have absolutely let you know that he prepped a very large fireball cool for this guy because I... we have so many tasks on our list it's like, we need this done as fast as we can! <laughs> I am just going to unholster, like, have my hand behind my back and unholster one of my daggers and just hold it tight and hope that Dragon sees this and gets the clue. Okay. Dragon, give me a perception check. Oh, I'm so good at these. Oh, no. Okay, it's a 27. 27. I'm going to say that more than enough sees Shionibis a subtle hint of danger. Strange danger. Like, slide, cl or, um, yeah, uh, bolt closed. All right, here we go. He's, I mean, he's saying that to Alona. Like, oh, good. Yeah. I am going to be like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm so sorry. You look rather tired. Are you headed into town? And I'm yes. going to slowly start to get on the horse. I'm heading into town. I figure they must have a nice inn that I can sleep at. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I hear I hear they have some really nice nice places to stay. Good luck on your travel. I am just going to get out of the way so they can fireball this man. <laughs> yep. Get all right, out. all right, all right. Uh, really fast, as you leave, give me one more will save. And then with that, I believe you're going to be rolling to hit, uh, Dragon. So I, I, I want you to tell me how this would work, because I'm not 100% sure. I prepped a spell strike round. Does that mean I would have three actions on my turn still, or does the spell strike still take up two? Spell Strike sold, uh, takes up two actions because it's just okay. a fire with a spell attached to it. All right. So uh, I'm going to cast True Strike as my one action. 
and then I'm going to attack with the other two spell strike. Okay. Go ahead and roll twice and keep the higher of the two. Okay. We love you. You've been such good so such a good dice. Here we go. Okay, it was so close to that twenty, it rolled right off of it. I'm very sad about that. Okay, I'm going to do my second roll. That's worse. Okay, I'm gonna hero point. And that only I only re-roll one die for hero point, correct? On the true strike, or is it both? It's yeah, it would be one of the two that you rolled. Okay. Yes! It's not a nat 20, but it's pretty damn close, so that's a 40 to hit. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, one second. I need to confirm the creature's AC, and I also need to know, Kylie, what was that will save that you just that you had rolled for me? Uh, uh, twenty nine. Okay. So that forty is a dirty crit, oh and you saved on the spell on the dot, which means you're going to take a negative one status penalty to perception checks for one round, which means when you roll initiative, you'll be having a minus one on your initiative check because this thing's about to get blown in the face by this bullet. I mean, I'm, he's probably gonna die, but let's see what happens. Fra what? Phrasing? Um, you, know what I, you know what I meant. <laughs> Don't you put that juju on me, Ricky Bobby. Um, so unlike the last time, I do need to actually roll dice. Uh, I'm just gonna tell you guys, cause it's fun. So just the fireball by itself is 10d6 fire damage. <sighs> and then because it was a crit, my my gun does 3d12 plus 7 plus 1d6 holy damage and 1d6 fire damage. So um, if you guys want to have a chat while I start rolling dice and doing math in my head... Sure. So I'll tell you what, while you're doing that, um, so, Shionibus, you give me an occult check really fast. I don't do this shit. Yeet. Uh, I'm untrained. Uh, I'm looking into the chat and there's Reap going, I'm going to laugh. This is just an old person. <laughs> <laughs> I had that thought. I did have that thought. Uh, 30. Oh my God. Uh, that's a dirty 20. Dirty 20. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll give it to you. So, oh, a lovely Yule candle. As you Sorry, are. 22. 22? Sorry. Okay. As you're getting out of the way of the incoming shot, which you can kind of hear just a little faint, like, on the distance and the, like, as the, as the, as the round flies at you, you step aside and you feel this effect take hold and you, you shake it off. You know that he just tried to cast the spell sleep onto you. What an asshole. Yeah, because if you had fallen unconscious, you would not have been able to dodge this fireball that was about to erupt out of him. Uh, also, clearly a sleep demon. Yeah. Good. That was my first ever occult check, y'all. That was kind of wild. Yeah. Oh! Okay. Actually, that's a good point. I've never rolled occultism either. It's, it's difficult. There's not a lot of times I've made you run into things that deal with the cult. Mm. Um, it's mostly been like, you know, orcs in season one, which is not a cult. Uh, and this one, it's like demons and undead, and that's usually religion-ish. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have the number. Oh, boy. Here we go. I'm scared. Definitely not as close last time. I rolled a lot of low numbers. But mm -hmm. it is still 158 damage after doubling. <laughs> okay. Ouch. <laughs> this character is fun. <laughs> it's it's what happens when you attach a fireball to a to a an arquebus and then you pull the trigger and you crit. It's insane. Oh. So, yeah, uh, Shonibus. Oh wait a minute. Oh. Yeah, no, we. Woo 
Oh, okay. Uh, so the fireball erupts, and technically speaking, when an AOE happens, he's still kind of allowed to save. Yeah. But it's always considered, if, especially if you crit, it's considered one level worse. Well, I rolled a nat one. Oh, All that no. damage happened. All that damage happened exactly as you described it. It sucks to be this guy. He is on fire. Shambus, you need to make a reflex save now because he is now the epicenter of a fireball spell. Did did he uh, did he just incinerate or is he still there? No, he's still there. Uh, the critical fail basically made us your critical damage from the fireball applied exactly as expected. Well, it was bad. Anyone near Dragon just hears him. Oh, thank God. <laughs> like, thank the gods, because he was so worried that he just obliterated a random old guy. <laughs> so the fact that he's in one piece, well, mostly one piece, he's just like, oh, all right, cool. Uh, 32. 32. Okay. What's your DC again, uh, Dragon? Uh, my spell DC? Yeah. Uh, my spell DC is 26. 26. Okay. So you succeed, but not critically. So you're going to take half of that. Wait, what? So right. what was the fireball damage? Just the fireball damage? Just uh, the fireball damage. I know I, it's, it's weird. Let me, let me, let me, give me a second to, to remember. Uh, it was, I think that by itself was 64 or 68 damage. I can't remember which one it was. Yeah. So you're gonna take. I'm gonna say you're gonna take half of 64. So you're gonna take 32 damage as, as as you're as you're walking away from this old man, this massive fireball erupts off of you, um, and with a critical hit that uh, basically made it so that this was a crit fail and double the fireball damage. You're not taking all that double fireball damage. You're just taking half of 64 as you're able to jump out of the way in time. And from there, everyone give me initiative. Oh, you see Alona running down the hill. <laughs> no, Th thirty-one for Dragon. Is mine still at a minus one? Yes. Okay. I got a dirty twenty. Dirty yeah. twenty. Okay. Rolled a natural. Oh, you can't see it. I rolled a natural one. Oh no! Sam, no! No! <laughs> Distracted by the boulder. I'm just, I'm just like, ooh, granite. Mm. Uh, also, also, Sydney, I know you had to get up for a second, but after the shot was fired, you just hear Dragon like give the biggest sigh of relief that it wasn't just an old man he just obliterated. Oh, good. It's like, oh, he's still, he's still there. Okay, great. Good, amazing. This is, this is good. This is, this is good. Oh, solid. Very nice. Very nice. I knew you were gonna say it. Yeah. I knew it. Yeah, if you... it wasn't you, it was gonna be PJ. <laughs> there was a TikTok reap site he sent me once where um, there was this guy that was being like held down and like we'll let you go if you cannot do a Borat impression for five seconds. <laughs> <Or something Yeah. laughs> like that. Oh, and I, I like, love, I love that because it was like, like, like on a shirt said basic white guy or something, and it was like if you can get through just ten minutes. Without an impression back, we'll let you go. Yeah, that's fine. I, can, I I don't have to do impressions. Someone just goes, <clears throat> my wife. And he's like, no, <laughs> no. It's really good. It's really I, good. I don't think I could I could do that challenge. That's that's tough. It's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Um, Kylie, what was your initiative again? Mm, thirty six. Sorry, thirty five because it's a minus one. Damn. Okay, thirty five. So, let's get that sweet fight music going, and we'll see how this happens, because wow. he is already starting combat bloodied as hell. Good. Ichi smash. Even though Ichi got in that one. Ichi, wait, and then Ichi smash. <laughs> Ichi smash boulder instead? <laughs> Ichi, 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 wait to smash. <laughs> Here, okay. Do -do. Yeah. So while we're waiting for the fight music, Kylie, Shunbus is gonna go first. Oh, sick! All right. Let me pull up my cool shit from Anubis. Nope. 
Make sure I got everything. All right, we are going to lock and load. All three actions. Am I flanking him because I move? Oh gosh. Dragon, how far away would you say you were? The full range of the weapon? Uh, I, I would say that he's, would put himself like far enough away that he wouldn't be spotted, but within range that if everything goes horribly, horribly wrong, he can still run into the battle without it taking like five minutes. So okay. I can't remember the exact range on this guy, but he's probably about a hundred feet away. Okay, so unfortunately, that's too far to give you uh, a, a flat-footed from that or flanking from that. But Sam, where, which, which boulder? So if if the demon's here and Shionbus is about here, what boulder are you hiding behind? There's more than one boulder. I was oh. under the impression that there was but one glorious boulder upon this battlefield. Only one, but please place this glorious boulder for oh, us. Oh, I get. Oh, okay. I would say I am, like, if, sh if the demon is here and Shionibus is, like, next to it, I'm, like, the Y. I'm the other side. Okay. Got it. So with that, yes, you do have flanking. Which Eek. means he's flat-footed. Oof, okay. Hold on, math. First one is... Quick, 9 plus 6. What is that? 15. Cool, so that math is not right. I did not update that. Uh, yeah. That's a 35 to hit. Oh my god! For the first one. 35. I love you. A few points away from a dirty crit, but that definitely hits. Do you want me to do all of my rolls and then give you all the damage all together? Why don't we do that just for sake and ease my own mind? Yes, give me the other two attack rolls. Ooh. That's a 23 for the next one. That'll miss. Cool. That's a 37 for the next one. Battle dirty crit. Let's go. There may not be anything left of this guy, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> well, channels just need to the kill him anyway. For deadly. Yeah. I mean, that's fair, but holy mother of God. Yeah, remember when you were all fighting the liars joke and it was just a, a, a bang out drag out bloody fight that like almost everyone died at and it was just uh oh god it was a an edge of your seat and this guy's like i'm old and tired it's like <laughs> nuke <laughs> nuke from orbit <laughs> well what ha happened was is that we got to level nine and then also dragon went to new jack city <laughs> yes oh. i will i mean i'm thankful for everything but you did give, give me this <laughs> this damn thing. Look, Maguses are supposed to have guns. That's why they have the Starlight Span um, hybrid study. So, hey, giving you a gun is not uncommon. That's fair. It's just... Uh, no, I'll take it. Don't get me wrong. It's just bananas. I'm not complaining at all. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so many bananas. No. Oh. Yeah, we haven't needed to count on our NPCs at all either. <laughs> which is... Oh, God, which saves me so much mental, like tracking they're just there for moral support yeah yes 110 whoa 110. damn oh. all right And that's without so. sneak attack? <gasps> no, that's with sneak attack. That's with sneak attack. Did, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, you had sneak attack. Did you roll the extra d6? Yes, I did, yeah. And yeah, did yeah, you double yeah, it? Because on the crit, did you yeah. double it on the crit? Oh, yeah. man, okay. So you fade back the minute the explosion happens and you kind of get a singe. You just whip back, dock a few arrows, 
uh, and you just put two into this guy, one into his chest, and then one right into his heart. Um, he looks awful, and unfortunately is still alive, but not by much. Kylie, that's your turn. Next up, we got Wes. Finish I, him. I beg your unbelievable pardon, I'm up again? Oh boy. Yeah, you rolled a 31, Kylie had a 35. After you, if they're still alive, is the sleeping dog. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to use one of my actions to reload. Uh, and then the other one to spell strike with the heightens to sudden bolt. And Okay. Did you did you use the ability because your spell strike is done until you can do a? Um, oh yeah, until I do. Um, what is it? I believe it's a conflux spell, basically a focus point or a focus spell. You learn a conflux spell. Uh, let me just check spell strike real quick. Channel, right after you use the spell strike, you can't do so again until you respart your spell strike as a single action, which has the concentrate. Okay. So I just need to use an action to recharge. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So instead of doing that, um, what's the range on sudden? Only 60 feet. So, yeah, and I guess instead of what I'll do is... Uh, oh, I don't have the amount of movement to even get that close. So I will... Reload and I'll fire again. Just without a spell strike. Okay. Uh, roll to hit. Uh, it's a 31 to hit. 31 to hit. That is not a dirty crit, but that does hit. Okay. Cool. That's good. I, you know, I, I'll take one crit in this fight. I'm down with, I'm okay with that. Uh... 14, 16, uh, 23 uh, piercing damage. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, the bullet you see uh, hits him and this massive uh, mist, this massive red mist just comes flying out of his back. Uh, so reload, fire. Did you do one other action? I've got that one. It would be to... to start moving toward them just in case. Okay. You break from your position and you start running. Sydney, you're up. What are you gonna do? Is he still alive? I'm gonna hold my action and wait for each of you to do something. Cause at this point, Alona's like. <laughs> okay. All right, Sam, your turn. What are you gonna do? So currently, what am I seeing happening? You see, as you're hiding behind your boulder, this massive fireball erupt from behind your boulder. Um, and when the fire clears, there's Shionibus all primed and ready and puts two amazing shots right into the sky. Uh, suddenly, with a, with a violent recoil from his ribs out his back, you see a bullet pierce him and blood mist just fires out of him. He's just like, you see him slowly tr trying to transform into his demonic shape. And he's just riddled by bullets and arrows, and he's so confused, and he's so sleepy. And he looks like in really rough condition. Super rough condition. Okay, 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 hold on. Just one second. I am going to... I am going to... I'm already like on the boulder because I'm like peering over. I am going to pop up, run across the boulder, which I'm assuming is large, jump off with like a flying tackle attack. Um, and I'm just gonna use my furious finish feet because why not? <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, and I am raging before this. Yeah. I love it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and roll the hit. Um, yeah, he's flat footed. He's so flat footed right now. So this is advantage? Mm hmm. I'm going to use a hero point. 
Okay, that's better. Um, and to hit. <laughs> is that. Man, it's been a while since I played. That's really my to hit, is it? Wow. Uh, 30? 30. 30. 30 hits. Uh, you can go ahead and do the damage of your furious finish. All right, I get a circumstance bonus to damage equal to the number of rounds remaining in your rage, maximum 10. So that would be 10, because I just raged. Um, so I get a 10 plus all my damage. Yeah, which I believe at this point is 3d12 plus strength. This guy didn't have a chance. He really didn't. <laughs> really didn't. Oh my <laughs> god, he did not. <laughs> I built this, like, war of attrition for you all. Like, it was all going to be, like, the worst crowd control you've ever experienced. Ah, uh, nope. Nope, 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 nope. Knew we had to get shit done. Yeah. That's I'm really 39 that, points. 39 points of damage? Yeah. <laughs> so Ichi runs across this boulder, launches off as if she's about to, like, flatten somebody in the ring. Uh, but at the last moment, she swings her ball around her head and does this, like, tackling attack. Very dramatic. Oh, Sam, tell me the tale of... J just give me more details of how this <laughs> kills him. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <A> killing blow. <laughs> as, as she's flying through the air on the way down, it's, like, kind of, like, slow motion. And she's just, like, has a flashback to her days in the ring of when she did this exact move but instead she had climbed like to the top of like it was like a battle ring caged ring or something like that and done this flying leap onto one of her her many opponents long forgotten because they never won the championships um and she just remember how everyone cheered for her and she comes back to reality and she just sees this writhing uh burnt demon and she just got this smile across her face and she's like la pacifica dorita is back. <laughs> Bam! And as you land hard with your weapon and your body, you just see connection drop, and it's like someone stepped on a ripe watermelon. Just <clears throat> demon juice and viscera all over the place. Uh, and then I get up yeah. slowly, and I look at Shionavis, and I say, the boulder stuff was me. And, you know, you were my rock. <laughs> I'm going to say, you all get a hero point. Yes! yes! The sleeping yes! demon, the sleeping dog is at negative 20 after that <laughs> massive teamwork salvo. <laughs> Never had a freaking chance. Uh, <laughs> and with that, we're going to take our... our Almost a 30 minute break. We're gonna take a 10 minute break. When we come back, we'll have the rest of episode 41. We'll see you when we come back. Oh my God. Hello everyone. Hello and welcome to Edge of Legends season two, episode 41. Uh, and if you saw before the break, uh, these four people absolutely destroyed my combat. It was great. We've murdered an old man. You, murder, you murdered a demon. Three Who's, people. You, oh, you were people. part of. You were part I of that. I stood there and let Ichi kill it. I just think we need to give credit where credit is due, because these three people right here are incredible. <laughs> <laughs> we have an emotional support alone. <laughs> yep. <laughs> emotional support alone, and also I almost died last time. I can chill back here. They've got it. <laughs> it's like that's fine. I can miss one. It's all good, guys. <laughs> All right. Well, the sleep demon, the sleeping dog, has been destroyed. Uh, with that, you are still a few hours outside of the town of Dragon's Grave. You are welcome to do whatever you want from this point. Oh, and uh, Kylie, as Shionibus looks at that yellow golden letter with the names that was given to her, you do see the name sleeping dog just scratched out, as well as the liar's joke scratched out. There are five names left. Ooh. It Let's go. Um, so next. I, I mean, I want to search him to see if he has anything cool. Didn't he get like obliterated? I don't think there's anything left. Is there anything left, PJ? There might be. There's, there's, 
there's no equipment on the monster block sheet that I created. So That's unfortunately, fine. all you're getting is just a slap on the back and an attaboy. We saved people. Yeah, that's fine. He just yes. he and she sure. sits down against the boulder, and she is fatigued officially. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, "That's all I got." He's pretty dead though, so it worked. It, it really did. Mm -hmm. So what's left is our bod going to our bod. And and figuring out what we're doing about this weapon that he wants. Going to the death realm, which we don't have to do right now. Yeah, can we put that off as long as possible? Yeah. Okay. We can. And um, there's this guy that Lothier found underwater. Remember? Oh God, the water guy. I keep forgetting about the water guy. The water guy, yeah. Because you know he's under the sea. Under the sea. I knew somebody was gonna do it. I was feeling it. My <laughs> neck was all ready to do this. Like I was, I was enjoying yep. it. Ichi, when you were there, did you see the water guy, or was it only Lothir? Um, Sam doesn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> and I was at, I was at the top, so no, I just saw Lothir like freaking out. I'm pretty sure. Well, I suppose in order for us to go down there, we would all need ways to somehow get underwater. No, Shionibus, no. I'm not going no. under the water. Nope. Last time I did that, I almost drowned. I'm not going underwater. Okay, not so. near. Dig a hole? Down to where he is? Is there a hole down to where he is? I was saying we could dig one if no one wants to go in the water. Wait, how does that work, Dragon? You get a shovel and then you dig where the land is and you go under. Do you not know how tunnels work? He's in the water. Yeah, but they said he was connected to the land. It's not like he was just floating in the middle of the ocean. Oh, well, I... Actually, I don't know. I don't know if Lothir said he was connected to the land. Yeah, he did. He said he was, like, buried. In in a magical ice, maybe, god thing. Not necessarily... You know? No. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hmm. Hmm. Look, it wasn't a good suggestion. It was just a nobody wants to go swimming, so what's the other uh, uh, other way to do this? Is dig a hole. Let's talk to half. Uh okay, I'll do it without you showing this. He doesn't Either hate I won't me. Say anything. Well, here's the thing. Maybe he feels differently about you now that you were, you know, inside of a god for a little bit. Maybe he doesn't hate you anymore. I don't know it's been a while. Works. It's been a while, you know? Maybe he forgot. Maybe he forgot. What'd you do to this guy? I didn't do anything to him. I was naive and touched a blue shiny rock and it nearly drowned me. Yeah. Little did I know that was his kid. I just thought it was pretty. I just thought it was a pretty rock. So you're afraid of the water now? The Avatar of Death is afraid of swimming? Okay, you know what? I don't even have anything else to say. Okay, you can just... You, shut up. Shut up. Dragon's <laughs> just gonna, like, kind of start giggling to himself and, like, look, give glances to Alona and, uh, and, uh, to Ichi. To be fair, I've almost drowned as well. Um, multiple times, unfortunately. Really not great. Uh, very unfortunate. Um, but perhaps we should wait to tackle that for another time. If we don't want to handle that right now. I.e. maybe we should tackle him when Randy's back. Yeah, um, that's fair. That's what I was thinking as well. Yeah. <laughs> kind of useful but, to have the guy who could turn into a shark. <laughs> yeah. Um, but 
I guess the only other thing that we can really do now is is travel to Agrippa upon Aubert and go to where the battle was, which means we leave the city. So is there anything else you want to do here besides the thing that we obviously can't really do slash don't really do before we leave? Question. What are we doing with his arm? We gave that to, um, to Neen, remember? Right. We gave that to Tanin and the other guys so they could make a weapon out of it with their friends. Okay. Yes. So as of now, besides the dude that is trapped in maybe or maybe not the, the son of a god, we have nothing else, to my knowledge, to do in Dragon's Grave. I mean, there's, you know, there's Hera, if Tobias wants to deal with that, but I have a feeling that the answer is no. Yeah, I have something hmm. I just want to check really quick. Um, can I can I look if this demon has any kind of pockets or a bag? I want to see if there's any evidence that he has anti-caffeine flyers or pamphlet literature <laughs> upon his person, former person. Yeah, uh, upon looking at the, the, the little articles of, of clothing and personal effects you can find uh a series of blankets that were draping out of a belt uh a couple of pillows that were uh latticed with with rope to his back uh that's it uh just a long tunic basically like one long almost dress uh, and that's it he had nothing on him we killed hiding the... it too well yeah we killed the cozy demon yeah worth a look your villain is out there. Somewhere. Maybe a grip upon Obear. Perhaps. Alright. So does anybody else have anything else they need to do in the city? Or is there anything else we need to get before we leave and go take care of the Arbod business? No. I mean, no. I think we could all probably use a nap. I mean, I'm not... Again? Well, Chionobus, you look a little uh, warmer than you. I'm sorry about that, by the way. Oh, shit. Are my eyebrows still on? <gasps> Do <I> Twins? Have... <laughs> <laughs> See? Call it. Tails. She's going to, like, pretty, like, look at the, her hair. Your eyebrows are gone. <laughs> Dragon! <Dragon! laughs> Look, I, look, you knew the plan! Wings! You, you can barely notice. Oh, Ichi, break out Drag the duct on, tape again. Ichi, Drag get on. the duct tape. Look at me. Shh. Pulls dead in the eyes. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't lie to me. Pink. Yep. I won't. <laughs> okay. Oh, I adjust them to Do be I angry. Look fine. Just to be angry. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm just imagining like Shionibus and Dragon, two <laughs> tall people, having a moment of anger. This dwarf walks up with duct tape, gets on her tippy toes, and gives her angry <laughs> duct tape eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> well, this woman, well, this elven woman is just deadpan, looking, looking dagger at Dragon, like, don't you mess with me. Big silver line. <laughs> sorry. Well, like, you, you, just, you just see him this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Say it with your words. You look great. And then he just bursts out laughing. <laughs> the tape. She's gonna rip off the, the duct tape, and she's just gonna draw him on. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I thought someone would have my back. The only one that does is Ichi, because you know what? She's my rock. If I heal you, Don't your eyebrow, so eyebrows will grow back, probably. If you heal me? Well, I didn't know if you wanted to take a nap and do that instead, but I, I can heal you now. Will my eyebrows grow back? I think the answer is yes. No. I'll let Dragon soak in his shame. Okay. It's not my you fault st- you didn't get out of the way fast enough. But would you still want me to heal you, though? I mean, probably it'd be a good idea. Okay, I'll I'll just try and make sure your eyebrows 
Don't. No, if my eyebrows grow back, I won't be mad. Okay. I want to make that clear. All right. Oh man, I, don't I know just why I rolled that dice. That's wrong. I, I just told. If my eyebrows go back, I won't be mad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just thought of something, by the way. Thank God that demon was, like, didn't think about putting the horse to sleep. That would have ended poorly. Ooh, that would have sucked. Yeah. <laughs> Peter is like, why did I do that? <laughs> what would it accomplish? Shoot, what would it definitely do? Definitely wouldn't have gotten out of the way of the fireball. <laughs> um, you're healed 20. Ooh, okay. I touched you and I go, boop! Heightened. Hello. Bring me down a little bit. Do okay. your eyebrow? Do do? Should I roll for her eyebrows to grow back? Oh, no, yeah. they're back. Oh, sick. Ah, uh, so, are we going right from here to Agrippa Apano Bear? That's a hell of a walk because that's a whole continent and a oh, half. Oh no! Oh no! 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 You think we're walking? Excuse me. <laughs> we're not we, have, we have a magical <laughs> teleporting like nap room it's great <laughs> so okay so you're using Isua for their house okay I get it I get we it. love Isua well we love their <laughs> hospitality and they are a good friend to us we also love that their house is incredibly convenient <laughs> so I'm going to uh, hand wave the couple of hours walk back into town uh, once there, walking to Isawo's, um, you know, having a light snack. And then, of course, with the finding the right key, turning of the doorknob and opening up the door, you find yourself back in Agrippa upon Aubert. Uh, and despite the battle that ruined almost half of it a year ago, you find that it has been repaired pretty, pretty well, pretty quickly. I haven't. Dragon has not been here before, correct? You, I don't believe, have. No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, Agrippa upon a bear is, is effectively five uh, smaller uh, districts or cities put into a circle that share uh, two rivers that kind of uh, feed each other and also kind of end out into the main sea. Um, and in season one, there was the battle for Agrippa upon a bear where uh, Korokos. Uh, just obliterated like a half of it. And I think it was the first time you all faced him in one-on-one -on -one combat before the final fight. Uh, the green fire that you now know is a gift from Koromat to him was used to destroy a good chunk of the city. But there is some left over. That being said, like I said, it's repaired pretty well in the year plus that it was uh, at peace. So where do you go from here? Can someone remind me why we're here? Cindy, you're muted. Thanks, I was eating Taki, so I wanted to mute myself. <laughs> um, we're here because this is the closest city that we could travel to, to the battlefield. The other closest city is Daltonshire, and nobody wants to go there. So we have, how far is the travel from Agrippa upon Ober to the site of the battle? Um... It's a good, it's a pretty good walk. Uh, I'd say walking, it would take the better part of the remainder of the day. Horseback, it could take half a day and you can camp out there. Because um, it was basically above a grip upon a bear during the battle. And then I just started kind of sliding off as you all were destroying it from the inside out. Uh, I suggest we rent like a horse and cart and... Uh... I'd like to take a small rest to get some of my spells back, just in case he's, uh, you know, figured you know out what? a way to be super strong with one arm. We have to do it in honor of, um, in honor of our friends. We haven't been back here since we lost Rufa, and we haven't been back here since Woodward decided to go be with Nadir, so we should absolutely 100%, and it's funny that I'm the one saying this. Grab a drink at the Type and Pint. Elona? <laughs> I like where this is going. All right. Yeah, let's get a drink first. Oh, back at our old place. 
old stopping ground. I'm Let's so go. excited. Wait, does that mean you're going to have a drink, Alona? <gasps> if we are toasting to old friends, then yes, I will have a drink. But like, a drink drink, not like, I'm going to get a cup of water. You don't toast with water, that's, that's bad luck. It is? Yes. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I don't do that, but I just never heard that before. All right. Great. <laughs> All right. Type and pint time. Type and pint. I am so lucky. Uh, near my workstation where I do this stuff, I keep all my notes. I have season one and a half right here in my original notebook uh, for like halfway through season one and halfway through season two. So thankfully turn to my book and I find the type in pint is in the Ludier sector of Agrippa upon Obear. <laughs> Thank God I still have this. Yeah. Uh, so, because I was like, crap, what was the name of that district I made up two or three years ago? Uh, so you go to Ludir, uh, which is perfect because Isua's House of Enchantments is in the same district as the Type and Pint. Also the same district as KB Toys, Reginald's Royal Regalia, uh, Food Askewed, Madame Marta's Magnificence, Round the Circle Theater, which is owned by Ichi. That's true! Uh, the Teok Kath Coliseum, which still has an open invitation for the All Champions Cup. And lastly, Bun Boys, owned by Selma and Teresa. Oh, this takes me back. Man. Yep. It's like what, early 2021, late 2020? Oh, yeah. Oh, nostalgia. Anyway. Type and pint it is. Type and pint it is. Stop to the theater so each you can check on how the theater's doing actually yeah it's been a minute it's been a minute oh, and also right. fun boys so each you can have coffee and not die I, yeah no, there's a lot I, of good things here i was gonna say we should definitely stop into bun boys because who knows if they even carry coffee anymore don't why would you even say that what Be, are because you the last bun, because the last bun boys we went to there was, was no like coffee weird just them in their city kind of weird thing but how do you know that it wouldn't spread people aren't people aren't like that here i mean dragon is absolutely gonna check it out but he after what happened at the last bun boys he might want to try and sneak sneakily do that so that he can <laughs> like like prep ichi just in case uh all right, so we're going to the type and point. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes from like forever ago. Just making sure there's no other details I am forgetting. All right. Okay. So. I go to the typing pint, a quaint tavern of about two and a half floors. Uh, wide open seating with a fireplace adjacent to a handful of tables. Counter to your right is a large wooden counter. The overall painting is this uh, beautiful wall of, of, of green. Uh, almost like a, like a deep forest green with little notes of lime green here and there. But it's impossible to really see the paint on some of the walls because hammered through uh, nails, hanging from ropes, just plastered all over this tavern, you see uh, leaflets, paper, poems, novels, stories just stapled to every inch of this tavern. The beautiful stone fireplace adjacent from the uh, uh, wooden, the beautiful wooden tables has now also started to carry stories and drawings. The hidden door, which normally becomes a wall, has been released and open. In the back, you can see uh, some, some special hidden seating arrangements, a wooden stair set going upstairs to the second floor of the tavern, and, of course, two busy uh, tavern owners uh, making sure that people are uh, getting their drinks in exchange for a good story, a good poem, or a good life lesson. Welcome for the long time, for the first time in over a year. Welcome back to the Typing Pint where everyone's story is yours and where your story is everyone's to share. 
I'm gonna walk right over and see if the bartenders recognize us. The bar owners slash bar keeps. There is a moment of, I know you from somewhere. I know I know you from somewhere. And then when it hits them, they just slam their hands at the table. Oh shit! Holy shit, you're back! Oh my god, you're you're back! Oh, we haven't seen you in a long time. How have you been? Everyone come in, everyone. And they get this this bell and they start ringing the bell. And they say, everyone, quick announcement. Over a year and a half ago, we owed our lives to a plucky few of heroes that came here and helped us fight for safety. And our very lives, here's at least three of them. I don't know about the blue bastard, but there's three of them here now. Hey. I don't know you, mate. I'm sure you're great. I'd love to hear a story from you. But right now, there's three of them here. To the heroes of Agrippa Ponobar. First, mm, three drinks are on us. But you owe us a story. Ichi, where are those fan fictions? Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, which ones? Ichi, you should regale them with um, what we've been doing since we left Adolfon Prime, you know, because we went to Acadia and then... Oh, so not the fanfiction? And you see Ichi put back in her bag a, like, freshly pressed zine that says Blue for You, the Dragon story. Oh, no! <laughs> That's a good story. Read that one. Read that oh, one. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, you legends, you heard it. Right, I want you to go out and write the blue for you, Dragon Smut. Oh, write it no. now. And when we have our Q and A, whenever the season ends, we'll re I'll read it. I don't give a damn. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and then instead, Ichi starts uh, relaying the tale of how she just crushed this sleep demon uh, in great detail. <laughs> Oh yeah, and uh, certainly including everyone else's wonderful parts. And she will like inflate, like Alona's like waiting in the background she will make it seem like like his tactical genius and like oh with her eagle eyes she watched and waited and like organized it all i'm really happy it wasn't just yeah dragon was there and he helped and then <laughs> <laughs> and then i went in <laughs> oh man so they are they're just in awe like last time we saw you you were just fighting an evil orc general and fighting a whole war by yourself. You're gone for one year, now you're fighting demons and, and you met a blue guy. This is, this is incredible. I know, right? It, it seems so highly unlikely we would get a blue guy at all. Um, the demon thing was probably coming at some point, but... Uh, what, 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 else, what else have you done? Where else have you been? Like, all right, so you fought a demon. Wait, where was the demon that you fought? Where... Where do you even find one of those nowadays? Uh, near a rock, near a big boulder. Just near a big, a real big boulder. It was a, it was nice. It was like a um, ooh metamorphic granite. Metamorphic ooh. granite. Yes, you could just little pieces of quartz all scattered in there. It was nice and smooth. Mm. You could tell millions of years old. Millions. <sighs> one of the bartenders is sitting there, like. The quill writing this down gets a piece of paper, walks over by one of the walls, sticks it there, puts a hammer and nail to it, and goes, You see here, folks, the first tale of what we hope is many of the heroes of Agrippa Pono Bear as they've come back to have a drink at the typing pint. But you gave us a story, so a drink for a tale. What do you have? Oh, what was what was what did we used to get here? A cheese wine? Cheese, I was going to say cheese wine. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Wine Let's here. do it. Let's old time's sake. The the two the two proprietors look to each other and they go. Cheese wines are good. Yeah, we can we can give the dwarven cheese wine if, if you'd like. Um but also we have um uh, an old vintage of Elvin. Uh not not Nubian Elvin, unfortunately. This is more Somewhere further north, near near the cheese wine. Would you would you like the cheese wine or the northern elvish ale? I'll I'll take the the elvish ale. The northern elvish, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, we'll go for that. Something yeah. new. Yeah. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I don't want to discourage you. Everyone should enjoy what they enjoy. 
they bring out this massive like stone bottle and like wrapped in leather around it just is a big old like image of a block of cheese and in dwarvish if you can read it it just says uh uh cheese wine vintage old they <laughs> pull out the cork from it and you immediately smell that scent that scent of like salty gross feet that just comes out of this wine and they go it's gonna leave it here for you if you want it if you're not you want it one second they go in the back and come out with these two smaller bottles made from beautifully sp- uh, spun glass with this great like rifling around the neck you know kind of like this nice twist to it and they say here's some uh, North Alvin Ale uh, the bottle is designed so that it doesn't matter what angry you pour at you'll get the perfect par every time also it has this nice spiced note to it the very cold touch to the tongue I recommend it go ahead and do whatever you want I'm just... a mocker George I you don't like cheese wine why do you carry it but what you don't like cheese wine why do you carry it Look, people give us alcohol, and it is rude to refuse free booze. So you put it in the back with everything else. Ichi is going to look the bartender directly in the eyes. I want you to make this into a charcuterie, which means I want you to mix them together for me. You want the elven and the cheese wine? Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. They grab a big tankard. They kind of like crack some ice. They put it in there, hoping that it might cut some of the flavors a bit. They get, they they get the cheese wine, the elven ale. They're about to pour one and stop, and the other and stop, and let's go. And they just pour both at the same time. And you see these two chemicals mix over the ice. You put it down. They get like this little bean, this like like nice little thing of vanilla bean. They kind of like rough it up so some of the vanilla stuff just kind of lands in it, and they spread it around a bit, and they go, "Bon appetit." Hope you like it. If anybody Thank sees you. Dragon, you just see he's horrified right now by this abomination that has been created. <laughs> With a small little like mushroom cloud, <laughs> <laughs> the, with, the po- with the poison skull. <laughs> Ichi's gonna wait until everybody gets their drinks um, and then she's going to attempt something. (laughs) Uh, I want to, once everyone has their drinks, I want to see something on the wall and put it out to Dragon (laughs) and try to swap drinks. Oh no! Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to assume everyone else is taking the northern, the northern, uh, northern elvish ale. No. Mm-hmm. No. What are you getting, Sydney? I'm grabbing the cheese wine because these people are being very prejudiced, and I want to take the cheese wine. <laughs> okay. The doesn't drink. <laughs> All right. I but love it. Alona, are you, are you just, are you are you handling the whole bottle, or are you pouring some out? The cheese wine. Are you just are you just doming it or are you like pouring some out for yourself? It's Alona. She's gonna pour just a little okay. bit. Okay. 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 <laughs> uh, so to confirm, Kai, uh, Northern Elvish Ale. Yes, absolutely. West Nor- Northern Elvish oh. Ale. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then that means Sam, I need for you to make for me a deception check. Okay. And this will be against Dragon's. Perception DC. I just want everyone to know I have two hero points left because you've granted us two this game, and I've only used one, and we always start with one. It's true. It's true. It's true. And I cannot think of a better use of them than uh, chicanery like this. I love that face. I don't. (laughs) Okay. Do I tell you what I got? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 22. 22. Okay. Okay. My pa- my perception DC is a 23. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so, so close. So close. I thought I was so screwed because my perception's so bad. <laughs> well, you know, you do have two hero points. I'm just putting it out there if you want to use it on this. Oh, the DM trying to get rid of your hero points is a good I, play. I used DJ. one. I used one. It was a no go. I rolled the same number on that second one, so no. That's it. Okay, it's, okay, so it's 22. Stands. 
So as you are having a moment, and I will let you decide whatever role play you want in, at this point in time, there is a bit where, where Ichi is making this like fake gesture with her hand uh, and does like a kind of like try to like a, a three card Monty with these uh, tankards. The only tip off that you had, Dragon, is as, as you're having a great time, you suddenly just get that horrible whiff <laughs> of like, Old Doritos and and uh, um, <laughs> like rotting oh, fruit or something. <laughs> yeah, like old Doritos and sour cream. Like you get that smell and you're like, what? No, no, no. Yeah. And, and no, it no. Doesn't you work. you made your bed. You lie in it, and I take my drink. What? Back. I don't know what you're talking about. Why did you take my drink? Fine, have it your way. And I each will. will. Just, <laughs> each you will just down her. <laughs> To us, whatever our toast is. All right, down it. Uh, cheers to that. But I'm Actually, watching you. You bring up a really good point, Ichi. Al Alona, with her drink, would like to get up on the table and tell the entire bar about the story of Rufa. Mm. About how we traveled to Shin to save a land that was corrupt beyond imagination and how our friend sacrificed himself to become a guardian of that land and how he can never come back and he's a hero. The people behind the counter, of course, are writing down the story with great interest. They're writing about how much of it do you tell? Like, the whole bit? We're leaving out the bit about the hungry ghosts and the tree because we don't want people to know there's a tree. It's true. People don't, people probably shouldn't know that there's uh, hopping vampires that are in a mafia that want to eat your blood. We'll yeah, eat your soul. We also definitely made a deal with them, so we're not going to mention that part. So, yeah, we're going to get rid of that, yeah. What? So they, they, they are hearing about everything, about the eight pillars of the empire how some of them were corrupt and following uh, a tyrant of an emperor and how some were uh, just stalwart, you know, people of, of, the, of, the, of the land of a, a golden dragon horse who could fly faster than light, of fairies and minotaurs and, and, and all sorts of demigods and folklore that live just outside of and with everyone in town about how Rufa solved an amazing case of sabotage, murder most foul, and exposing the emperor. Finding out that he was one of the older dragons. How you learned about those amazing sword fights. Good old, um, uh, I believe his name was Piweiwei in his little hovel hut, learning about the stars and the dragons about Salomat and how in the final moments she blessed him to be her champion, to fight the evil corrupted tyrant and how they flew into space and fought and came colliding back down with earth. And they just, they're taking pages and pages and pages of notes and they mix a drink together for everyone, place about four or five on the table and they walk with this large leaflet of paper. But instead of putting it on the wall, they walk over to the fireplace with pictures drawn. They put it there, hammer it through. A ballad of Rufa, a fabulous golden dragon. Portraits you see now are drawn of Woodwort and Mush. The fabulous Rufa. Portraits of you all. The fight that you had, Ichi, in that little makeshift cage match in the middle of Agrippa upon a bear. The shot of Shionibis shooting Gebzebel right in the head, killing him dead. And even the final battle in this town of all of you wreathed in green corruptive fire, fighting back Korokos. This is the wall for the heroes of Agrippa upon a bear over the very fireplace. With that, they offer all of you this mixed drink that they invented while listening to the story. A complicated mix of strong spirits, a very subtle spice, 
and overall mixed with ale and different liquors, a beautiful golden glow. With, you know, cherry and orange peel for garnish. Ah, you old-fashioned lover, you. <laughs> mm. We've been through a lot. And Alona looks at Dragon. Clearly. <laughs> You've been through a lot, too. Well, we've... Over these past few months together, we've shared um, quite a few stories as well. We certainly have. It's definitely not been boring. We're really lucky. I think so, too. She looks around at all her friends and is just giving this like big, big smile. <laughs> oh no, it's bad. It's bad. I tried to hold it in. It's not good. Oh. Oh man, I wonder who could have seen that coming. Takes a <laughs> sip of his his mixed drink. I was gonna try to describe your cock your cocktail each. I think you just I think you summed it up. <laughs> it's bad. Real bad. Mm -mm. No good. Oopsie doozies. Boo boo drink. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> mind by itself is, is stomachable. <laughs> oh, it takes it, knocks it back. Oh, mean. Actually, if I recall correctly, when you did drink this in the past, I think I described the flavor as being like a vanilla milkshake. Yes. Yeah, it's not bad. It's really not that bad. It's really not that bad. Because people it's, are just being really weird about it. No. It smells horrible because it's made of fermented cheese, but it tastes, like I said, like a boozy vanilla milkshake. Very rich, very creamy, uh, very I, sweet. Yeah, I thought we had tried this. We tried yeah. this in um, in New Jack City when we went out drinking with the uh, Night Witches. Yes. I was trying to look up if cheese wine actually exists, but everything is just like cheese pairing. There's cheese tea. Cheese tea exists. Oh, uh, cheese nope. foam. That's, is that, wait, wait, is that there's like finely grated Parmesan and hot water? <laughs> no, no, there's like a real thing. It's like on, in like boba shops, they call mm -hmm. it like cheese foam. Mm hmm. It originated in the night market sands of Taiwan around 2010. Back then, vendors combined powdered cheese and salt with whipping cream and milk to form a foamy, tangy layer on the top of cold tea. And then from there, I won't read you the history of cheese tea, but it exists. I mean, I gotta amazing. try this stuff out. Uh, Reap Psyche says it's amazing, so I'm gonna nope. trust them. I'm gonna try it. Look, don't get me wrong, Reap Psyche, I love you, but I'm not trying cheese tea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I feel like that has the same consistency as this cheese wine and all i think of is like thick velveta cheese yes not, which is not it. the worst mm. with a straw that's what yes. i'm imagining no. it's like velveta really cheese like, with a straw think like you know cream like cream cheese icing think that instead you know it's always the best on red velvet cupcakes you know that i hate red velvet that would the make sitter, sense. I just love cupcakes. The cheese whip in the can where you just- Oh, that's just worse. <laughs> yep, yep. It's, it's continuing to get worse. Amazing. Nah, we're all gonna go out and get cheese tea. I see this for our future. Yeah. Anyway. I'll be there with a vanilla milkshake just <laughs> watching you guys do that. Also, I kind of want mochi nut now. Not gonna oh, lie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Come, oh, over, and, come yeah. over and we'll get mochi nut. Hell yeah, mochi nut and those like hot dogs covered in potatoes, deep fried. That's like covered in like <gasps> ta uh, taki yeah. dust. Okay, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I know what we're doing on Monday. All right, uh, let's let's get back to here. Uh, the drinks are amazing as always because it is the type and pint. The only thing better than their drinks are their stories. Um, Most of our drinks are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um. I will say this, if I'm going to guess, because the milkshake tastes very good, but the Elven Ale is very spiced and very ale -y, it probably just tastes like a very weird concoction of a milkshake and a beer, like a really good beer, but together they don't work. Yeah, that's the face. And I think that's what's throwing Ichi off, is that it's like, is it curdling or is it just me? Like, it's not, it's not the move. 
it is kind of like creating its own new little fresh cheeses right inside of it all at once. It's its oh, own little man. ecosystem. Each is like, is oh. chewy? Is it supposed to be chewy? <laughs> That's what curdling does. <laughs> That's what curdling does. Uh, so I guess the question is, during the type and pint, fires roar into cities and construction. A uh, handful of people are there and more are coming in when they find that the heroes of their fine city have returned for a drink and a tale. Uh, but the question is, what are you going to do? Are you going to reminisce some more, look around? Uh, do you want to step out and do anything else while you're here? The entire five mini cities into one big city is yours to peruse. Ichi, do you want to check out the theater while we're here? Since we're here. Yeah. Yeah, we should. Yeah. We I, should. They're pretty self-sufficient, uh, you know, but I'm interested to see what they've got playing right now. Yeah. Also, w while we were passing by, what's a toy store? You, we oh. went to a toy... Oh, you weren't there that episode. Ooh. Um, We went to a toy store before. Dragon? KB Toys? There was one in New Jack City. I got... Oh. What? Oh, I didn't tell you. I didn't show you. Um, I I got uh, Joey, who is our adopted son that you've never met. Hold up, you have an adopted son? Yeah, well, with morale. A ward, a ward. Excuse me. An adopted me? ward, person, young boy. Um, okay. we just found him in the woods one day. We couldn't just leave him there. You guys are all over the place. You know, there's a certain activity that normally takes place before you have a kid together. We don't have a kid. He's with Morel's sister. Never mind. Just... Um. But anyway, his name is Joey, and I and I bought him a Dream Maker Six. What, last what time is, we were. What is that? Um. This is for games. Yeah, for um games that you enter into this cloud and you and you play with other people across the world. Or just yourself, well, you know. It's fine. All right. And oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's not really something we playing is not we did a lot of in Svegar. The our, <gasps> our toys were weapons. Okay, so who oh. wants to go with Ichi to the to the thingy and who wants to go with Dragon to go get go get a video game system? I know I have a business and a responsibility, but I want to help Dragon get a toy. Let's go get Drake on a toy. Uh, uh, all right. Okay. You, is this for this is for children? Not necessarily. Other people. Uh, um. For example, uh, Morel played with Joey quite often when we, they first got it. Very good. Okay. I think Tobias played a little bit too. Yeah, it's for fun. You know what fun is, right? Yeah. It's okay. Like what I do whenever we have a fight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah right. No, like yeah, that's fun. Like, um, have you ever had fun when you weren't fighting something? When you weren't putting the hurt on another conscious being? Yes. Um, it was the activity I was referencing prior. Hey. What? Have no. you ever had good PG? Family fun, you know, like a board game or. So um, I'm just gonna, just real quickly lay out how my life was. I was born in Svegar, to a family disgraced by the Jarls, trained to be a bounty hunter. Then I was killed by a demon. Woke up in Inshelator inside of a, well, this body, and was trained as a magus. So no. Not, you never had really. like downtime to play like shoots and ladders or marbles. The blackjack. Like... Why would you shoot a ladder? Okay. All right, we're going to the toy store. Come on. Okay. So right now we have Ichi and Dragon going to KB Toys. <laughs> For some reason I put Dragony. I'm just gonna uh, say I, lo I love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and um okay so you're going to kb toys alona and Sh uh, shonibus what are you doing um shonibus is your uncle in town shit is my uncle in town is like my whole family in town 
Um, go get those notes city, from season one. He was, oh, he was the, the city architect. planner. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was the architect slash city planner for Grippo Pano Bear. That's right. And I'm sure since they had their efforts destroyed by uh, the war, he's probably got job security a for a while. Going. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so he, he was there. there when we started season two, when we had the whole reunion, he was there. Mm-hmm. Because right. um, Alona was like, princess! And she's like, shut your goddamn mouth. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, you know what else is in this city, Alona? The Church of Iron. Oh! Alona's getting swamped! <laughs> More choco meats! Let's get my strength modifier be above a zero! <laughs> Chocolate meat? I, sorta. I, I've missed so much. Choco <laughs> meat? Oh! Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. Is it like it's... candied bacon, but covered in chocolate? It's like whey protein, but better. I'd Dra- say better. Dragon's been trying to beef up since the very beginning of the campaign. <laughs> well, <laughs> we haven't been around any churches of iron, so Lona hasn't been able to pick you up any choco meat. <laughs> okay, I just kind of got it. Is this like a church, but it's yes. just exercise equipment? Yes. Okay, all right, just... <laughs> it's, it's PJ's church. <laughs> I made it up with my pride and joy. Oh, really? I didn't guess that at all. <laughs> you haven't met Corelli and Long Rep yet. <laughs> it's great. It's a good time for everybody. Oh, boy. All right. Um, all right. So many notes. All right. So let's do this first with uh, let's go to KB Toys with uh, Ichi and Dragon. You go into uh, this quaint little toy shop, which uh, you can tell they're trying to knock some of the walls down to, you know, with, with the destruction because of the war, they're trying to use this as an excuse to get more space for the KB toys so they can shelve their Dream Maker 7s that they have in, in stock. Uh, but they're being held. They're being held I to... I just bought a Dream Maker 6 a few months ago! Yeah, that's how it, it is. Blink, and there's the new ones out already. But they say, and f- but you 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 find the person at the front who uh, appears to be one of the people born here. Uh, curly brown hair. You're starting to see a little bit of a salt and pepper grow in. A kind of tired uh, expression on their face. Uh, lanky, bad posture. And he's just like, he's a kid. He kind of greets you. Oi, uh, welcome to um, KB Toys. Uh, where you say, uh, have you tried turning it on and off again? Uh, your your dream maker that is sometimes doesn't work and you have to try poking it in and turning it on off again it's not broken it's not okay good we're here to to buy new toys do you have hold on i'm gonna turn around just like look at dragon like for the first time each is really like looking at you just like hmm hmm how tall are you it's like six foot Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, and she turns back to the cashier and she says, do you have anything that is like, um, a friend, but inanimate? What? Not you, Dragon, the, the this guy. I'm still, uh... question still stands. A friend, maybe soft. A soft friend. Squishy. I, I think we. I think we can find a soft friend. Yeah. The maybe. pleasant, like smile or demeanor. Hold, hold on. And he kind of leans back and he shouts, "Moss, Moss, people out here looking for you." And he his nasally voice. No, I'm busy. I'm doing inventory. I don't want to come out. That's the fluffiest, friendliest person I know. No, um, so that's an animate friend. I'm looking for something more inanimate, like something that can't die ever. Right, right. Not looking even once. For, looking for like a fluffy, 
Right, all right. So if you go way in the back there, take a left, you're going to find uh, uh, fluff mellows. You're going to find uh, 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 friendlies, like 14 E's. You're going to find um, puddles, like a blanket you wear. Uh, okay, and you're okay. going to find uh, something called uh, uh, Beanie Babies. <laughs> Are they collectible? Well, they were, but then the whole market got tamed and they made oh, too many of them. And so now we have just their bits. Of, right, the inflation, there's too damn many back there. So if you want them, please, just they're cheap. What, uh, five. For for three gold, just okay. buy all the beanie All beans. right, awesome. All right, um, Dragon, yeah. you stay here and just browse, just browse, check stuff out, look around, see what you got. Um, I'll be back, and Ichi immediately disappears into the back shelves. Uh, so um, what kind of toys do you have? The, the the guy at the desk just kind of like puts a hand on it, pops a hip. Nothing around here, Oria. No. 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 We got toys. We got all kinds of toys. If you're thinking about it, oh, we probably have that one too. Yeah, I'm not. F- okay. I'm from Svegar originally. Um, we didn't have a lot of toys. The first gift I got that was for fun was a blunted sword. We got those. But ours are bright colored. They look like candy sometimes. We get a lot of complaints. You got a candy sword? No, but it looks like candy. That's where we get lots of complaints. Alright, I kind of would have been interested in the You'd be surprised how many stupid children try to eat their bloody swords. It's enough. Trust me. Give me complaints. Trust me. As a father, children try to eat everything. And then he's kind of like stops. And it's like, it, you can see it's like the brain, the wheels turning in his brain. It's like, I wonder if my kid ever got a toy. Um, it, sorry about that. Uh, yeah. What would you get for a, a child around, say, 10 or 12? Oh, around 10 or 12. I recommend the Dream Maker 6. Uh, the 7 is going to be coming out in about a year's time. But quite frankly, it's it's too powerful. It, 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 no one can get it, the bloody thing to work. And we're so under-sourced on those Dream Maker 7s. So give me the Dream Maker 6. All right. How much is that? Oh, for this uh, model, uh, about 300 gold. Can you, like, send it somewhere? I could probably go to the post office, add another 150 gold. Uh, off continent or on continent? Off. Yeah, 150 gold, so 450 total for the shipping and handling. Yeah, I'll, I'll take one. All right, we're going to. Hey, Moss! Moss! Dreammaker 6, Moss! All right, fine. Kind of coming out as this awkward, skinny guy with just, you know, big hair and big glasses. Hello. You like a Dream Maker 6? Yeah, I just needed, um, I don't know, can you like wrap it in something nice and uh, just want it sent somewhere? Oh, nice. I can do that. One second. They like, wrap it up with like this brightly gold colored like uh, uh, paper. It, it, it's tough and durable. Wraps it with, with this beautiful cord um, and say, for free, since you're having it chipped off, I can write a letter, a note to it. What do you want me to say? Um, and he's gonna kind of like, you see him like panicking for a second. Uh, uh, just say, I, I hope you have all of the nicest things in the world. And uh, I guess that's it. Okay. They do ask you if you want to put the name of the receiver or the name of the giver on the tag. Uh, yeah, I'll put the, uh, not who it's from, but um, 
Uh, I'll put to its two. Um, uh, and he's gonna like give the ad like the the area, the town. Um, give it to uh, uh, it's to Liam. All right, to Liam. Sign it off. And Moss runs out uh, to the delivery station to get that sent off. And the person there whose name tag says Roy just kind of looks at you. That sounded really heavy. Probably 450 gold. Yeah. And he's going to pull out his coin purse and kind of like he's got it in like little bags of 100 and just hands over four bags and then like splits one in half and gives him the other 50 gold. Well, pleasure doing business with you. Thank you very much. Here is the invoice for your order. So you have it as a receipt. Uh, welcome to KB Toys or uh, your the t- toy of your dreams can come true. Is there anything else I can get for you? No, I think I'm, I'm, I'm good for now. Thank you. Okay. All right. At this point, Ichi, you hear a rustling from the back. Ichi pops out from between some shelves and is carrying a... Uh, a very large, round, overstuffed creature. You're like, what kind, what, is, what is this animal? What is this beast? It has cute little beady eyes, a small little smile. It's the same size as Ichi though. It looks kind of just like what Alona is, or Cindy is holding right now, but it's blue. It is blue, it is Dragon blue. <laughs> Um, and she carries it up. And I think that this one has, it's like a little dragon. So it's still very round, a round rendition, but it has little wings on the back um, and a little dragon tail. Um, and she just walks up with it. Uh, all right, I'm getting this. Pops it on the counter. Doesn't even look at Dragon yet. Roy looks... Where it looks at it and goes, oh, it's a really great choice. That will be uh, 20 gold for that handmade big blue uh, uh, cuddle dragon. Oh, yeah. And uh, throw in some of these beanie babies. Uh, right. There's, they're, all, they're all bears, you know, just standard bears. Um, but one looks like, um, like a little panther colored, like kind of cat bear. Um, and the other one is like a little owl bear not like an owl bear but an owl bear um and uh a third one that looks like tobias a little bit somehow we don't really know uh and she's like uh you're gonna throw these in right free of charge uh no free of charge no no free of charge but i will this guy here's what uh you know what i'll give you i'll give you a deal i brought you Uh, business all all of those uh all those beanie babies for one gold Throw in some bubble gum. The stares pink at kind. you. Please. He stares at you. Hands on the table. One slowly moves back under the counter. Pulls out like a, a package of gum with like brightly colored stripes on it and starts moving it across the table. Fine. One thing of stripey might be bubble gum. And, 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 Ooh, that's and that's the it. stuff. That's the, you know what's up. All right, here's your money. We have a deal. All right. And she's going to pack it up. She's going to get the big squish melt and just say to Dragon, you ready to go? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And as they leave the store, once they get out of the store, she's going to turn around. She's going to look at Dragon. Like, so this is for you. Just shove it in his arm. Oh. It's incredibly soft. It's the softest thing you've ever felt in your entire life. When you squish it, it feels like you've never experienced trauma. Just for a moment. He's going to poke it. Oh, wow, that is soft. And then just take it out of the package and, like, give it a big hug. Mm. This, this is nice. Thank you. Thank you, Ichi. The, the, yeah. I, I, I actually really needed this right now. And you see him just, like, curl down a little bit. All right. And he's never died, not once. They can't do that. Well, 
soon I really won't be able to either, so one and the same. That's weird. Let's go back. <laughs> Hugs tighter. <laughs> Uh, also, hero point uh, to Wes for that emotional uh, bit. I, I apologize if the uh, comedy was undercutting it. I was trying to pull from IT crowd, and I didn't want no, to. No, you're good. No, you're good. You're good. No, you're good. That was great. So, with that, we are going to move over to. Let's go to Alona at the oh. Church of Iron. Nice. Yep, walking in there. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You go to the Obus uh, uh, section. Uh, you see the Church of Iron has also been growing. Um, you go inside, and Corellian Long Wrap, the strongest root in the Iron Tree, is in front of the uh, uh, the building with like a sign-up sheet and like jars and jars of his Choco Meat supplements just stacked up to the ceiling, and you can see this place is in full swing. Yeah, yeah, I need to pick up two containers of those, one for Alona and one for Dragon. I was hoping, um, Alona talks to Corellian, I've been doing a very good job of working out. I don't know if you could tell. Yes, I can see. Your gains are quite swole indeed, my lady. They look quite swole. Um, and Alona goes, yes, I... I have been not lifting, um, but I get a lot of exercise when I um, uh, am with my friends. I was hoping that I might be um, blessed today for my dedication to the swole um, and get a point towards my strength ability score. Now wait just a minute. You come here verily, yes. You have you have gotten quite yoked, my my fair sister of steel. But you say you wish to become stronger. Have you have you yet to press the bench or squat the hoist? I have not seen such such sacrifice. The sweat and blood has not been shed for the great iron dragon Thuzamat. I've been traveling. What now? Now hold a minute. There are many Church of Irons located at many locations across the world. I have not yet to see. Not in the ones you. I've been going to. There's not. There's mm. no freaking way. Mm. All right, fine. I'll make you this deal. Deep under my church, my temple of titans, there's a special shortcut to see the man himself. If you can go one to one with the Iron One, you might just be granted this. Are you telling me I've got a box of God? No, 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 Elona, that's not what we are about. We're about swole of spirit, not pugilism. But some of us, some of us are really good fighters. That's not the point. I have to bench press a God? Maybe. You know what? L let me just take you to Thuzmout himself. Um... Uh, you there, please, watch my most mighty of desks. It's a very swollen desk. I'm trying to get the wood adjusted. It's been rotted through for weeks. All right, come with me, Sister of Steel. Have you have you had some dragon's blood before we get going? No. You have not ridden on the dragon's blood yet? I just got here. Yeah, shake it up with some water. Um, you'll feel great. <laughs> Give me a fortitude save. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> no. Why? No. You gave us all hero points, right? <laughs> I did. Oh, it's not even that. Oh, God, it's still worse. Um, uh, It's a dirty 20. Dirty 20. You start taking it. Suddenly, this itchy sensation starts to, to spread out from your cheeks and face. You can feel the itching as you start feeling warm. You start feeling warmth just start permeating throughout your whole body and you start sweating immediately, profusely. And he looks at you and he goes, I ah, asked, yes. you are you are buzzing, my dear sister of steel. Let us go to Thuzamats now while you're still riding high on the dragon's blood. 
<laughs> so he takes you around, opens a door, goes another door, this deep staircase going down. Uh, and you start to not only feel this intense, intense skin cloying heat, but you can smell rusty metal and and bo and sweat from just generations of this and you finally get to the very bottom of the church of iron and there you see a river of molten lava and bigger than any building you see a bench press <laughs> almost like a temple itself this bench press locked and loaded in it you see a bench racked with more weight than you can fathom and coming out of the lava with this iron wrought skin pitch black with just brushes of pewter sweating just so buff and veiny and vascular you hear this voice hello my swollen sister of steel I don't like daughter that. of the deadlift no Welcome to my inner sanctum, the home of Thuzamart. Elon is questioning everything right now. <laughs> Just like, mm, this might be not what I thought it was. <laughs> Maybe not what I thought it was. Might be a little different than I thought it was. Are you, are you miring my gains, bro? Mm. Verily, dost thou mire me? I see that you put a lot of work into that. Good for you. Good for you. This is your whole thing. You do nothing else, do you? This is not my whole identity. I lead a rich life. This is just a hobby that I have really dedicated myself to. Great. Good. Good, Good. for you. So, yes. what can I do for you today? I would like one ability score modifier higher on my strength. How do I say that? Ah, uh, yes. You wish to become stronger. That is most swole, bro. Most swole indeed. Fine. Please, come upon my scale of crucible. Sit upon my bench. I'm telling you right now, I can't lift that. If it wasn't for Corali and Long Rep, I would agree and laugh at you. But I know now more than ever that we are to be swole of spirit and and yoked and ripped of mind and heart and goddamn body positivity. That is the secret to the Church of Iron. Not these sick calves that I possess or a dummy thick ass that I squat and press. No, no, no. It is the dummy thick intent of my character that is truly the gift. Let's go. Yes. Go, sister of steel, daughter of deadlifts. You jump into the bench press? Yeah. Okay. You are buzzing on pre-workout. You have just been given a pep talk by the god of, of gains. You can give me any check you want. I will allow religion, and it will be at advantage because of the pre-workout. Okay, that's good. I'm like, please don't make me roll athletics. For the love of God, please don't make me roll athletics. Um, what the actual fuck? <laughs> what, what is the actual fuck? Um, how many hero points have we received this game? I don't know how many you received. Know how at many least one. We, there are like I, three. If you haven't used three total yet, I think that I think you have at least those. All right, yeah. I'm using one more because I rolled a freaking two. I have an advantage. That's right. Oh, duh. <laughs> Thanks, Reef Psyche. I forgot the part about the advantage, <laughs> uh, which is great. Um, because I rolled a 19 on the die face, which uh -huh. makes this a 39. Damn! Okay, okay. Tell me the tale of what you experienced through your religion to hit this bench press. <laughs> my, my religion, but not really. Um, uh, Ilona sits down on the bench and all of a sudden this the, these mem memories wave over her. These memories of working out early in the morning with Ichi and and Ichi teaching Alona how to do a proper push-up and 
and then and then Morel showing her what what good form looks like, and then and then she remembers Morel's really big strong arms, and the way that the sweat goes down his shirtless body when they work out, and then she just grabs a thing and she goes, ah! and she. <laughs> So you wrap your hands around this bar, and this bar looks like it feels like it's made of just solid stone, old as the mountain, you know, like hewn by dwarves itself. And as you grip it and you just start pushing and struggling, nothing happens until you're, you start thinking and thinking. And you start seeing runes light up across the barbell. The the plates stacked on start glowing and glowing until finally <sighs> down to chest up one time. <sighs> and you rack it back on the bench you have lifted with the power of your religious check um the the weight of a gargantuan sized creature basically a tarask <laughs> with that thuzamat and Karelian long rep are just staring at you thuzamat slowly pulls out an iphone and takes a photo and puts it away <laughs> and he just goes that Indeed, was most swole, bro. <laughs> you have gained one whole bonus point to your strength stat. This means that I have a plus one to strength now, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Everyone I know have a plus one to strength. I'm no longer at zero. <laughs> I can hit better. Oh boy. So, I love how through the power of Alona being thirsty for Morel's muscles, she somehow pulled this off. Friendship and muscles. Friendship and muscles. Uh, and Thuzma and Corellian offer you, if you ever feel ready to continue to test yourself, improve yourself into the gym of the first games uh, at the Church of Iron, you can always come back and attempt another rep. Uh, and if you succeed, you will get another one strength to your strength, overall strength score. If you fail, you get nothing. But if you succeed, you can get another one. This is really good to know. Dre had me to and try just, this. And just to clarify, this is like, this is going from like an 11 to a 12, right? Not just. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just want to, I just want to make sure that I'm not just like, like, I can't just like go in here five times and all of a sudden have five strength for like no goddamn reason. No. Um, okay. Thank you. Oh, wow. This is great. <laughs> this is good. It's it's one of those things like, once per season, your character can visit these places and get a new, another strength score. Yeah. Exactly. There's, there's one for every stat. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, you go, you go on the treadmill of time and space, and you just start running, and then you come out, plus one of decks. Um, <laughs> So I will say that you are under the fatigued condition because A, you just came down from the pre-workout and two, you've just benched a multi-ton uh, metaphor for self-improvement. <laughs> um, so switching over, Kylie, you are trying to meet your uncle, uh, uncle, uh, I believe it's Akatsen. Sure. Yeah. So uncle Akatsen. Aka Aka Aten. There we go. Oh, that's Aka, it. Yes. Yeah. Your uncle Aka Aten lives in Somkad. And Somkad is the housing and family district. Um, you knock on the door. He opens the door. Oh, look. It is my niece. I'm so very happy to see you. My heart is overjoyed. It's been way too long. Please come inside. You know, it's been thousands of years, and I still think that every time you're lying to me about that. But why would I lie? You are my favorite niece. I am your only niece? Clearly, this puts you in lead for superior position of my love and affection. You're right, and I think that's more than my aunt would give me. Anyway! Um, so, like, what's been going on? Like, a lot of business since the last time I've seen you? Like, my bad, but, like, that's good news. I have been very busy since we've been remaking the city after the war effort. It's been tireless hours. Thankfully, I don't need to sleep because I am exhausted. But it's been worth it. Good, good, good. Have you had uh, the Ichi special at uh, Bun Boys? 
like i you, i know you don't need to sleep but like that would definitely like you won't sleep for days hmm. my apologies what is in ichi special you know i don't want to ruin it the experience for you so you'll just have to go and get one hmm. and it'll just be a truly inspirational moment you know hmm. is it a caffeinated beverage it is Oh, I see. Unfortunately, we have had to go NCC in this location uh, with uh, regards to help with the rebuilding. Mm. So there will be no more coffee at the Bun Boys in this city. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Yes, I am also devastated. Uh, I cannot have a coffee and I am so, so sad. You know, if you visit, I have a friend that lives in town uh, by the name Isowo. I'm not sure if you've met him. He's from Tezuku. Uh, he has amazing coffee at, at their place. They have amazing coffee at their place. And, you know, if you really just need a break from this, she points to the town, they would be happy to have you. Hmm. You know, I do believe I deserve a rest. You so, um, absolutely do. Break. Thank you. Also, have you visited home lately? I have not been home, but my sister keeps me appraised of things through scarabs and letters. Right, 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 right. So, like, have you heard anything going on? Like, I'm, I feel like I'm very much out of the loop. Not that I'm ever in the loop to begin with, but. I know that you have undertaken the task that has been assigned to you. Do you know about that too? I do. Your aunt was very excited for that. I know that she has been making preparations since you've taken this task to hand over all authority and power to you when the task is completed. And then she will retire. So the task has to be completed for for the coronation and everything? At this point, yes. Has everyone gone through, like, these tasks? It's not just me, right? There is a different task for each leader that has taken authority. This one, of course, will help our people greatly. And therefore, with that behind you, you will be a shoe in for full support to take the throne. Yeah, but, like, these kind of suck, though. Like, we've already, like, I've already done two. And, and this is just kind of sucks, you know? Hmm. Sucks. Yes. I definitely believe that this could suck. You don't know that word, do you? I do not. No. I'm, I'm imagining this word to mean a negative stance. Yes. It's terrible. Oh, I see. I it's see. Terrible. Then it is terrible. It does. It is sucks. It yeah. is very sucks. Nailed it, uncle. Perfect. I'm so good at words. So, other than that, nothing on the red waste or anything? Nothing that I need to be concerned about? There has been some public displays of Ravon trying to show his ugly head. He has been quickly banished. He seems to have a lack of faith in himself. Other than that, nothing else has been happening. Good. His morale is low. Keep it that way. And like nothing, nothing weird with like Asumara or anything, nothing like that. Mm, he does miss you quite a lot. Other Talks than that? about it. Hmm? Other than that? No, like He's... him turning into a demon anymore. Like that, that is done, right? No, we have not seen any demonic activity from him since he has returned from the dead. Thank you, Ra. He has been busy becoming head of the guard as well as one of the chief generals of our uh, demon hunters. Um, yeah, he said they say besides training and working with your aunt, he spends most of his time uh, thinking of you and writing poetry and doing push-ups. It's pathetic. Oh uh, yeah, I remember him and Alona doing a lot of push-ups all the time. Okay. Well, is there anything I'm missing? Uh, I don't know, but niece, what brings you to town? It's not every day I get to see my favorite niece. You know, just pass them through. Oh, all right. 
it's been like a year and a half since we've been here last and you know we have some new friends traveling with us and you know we're just kind of paying respects Right. Well, um, let's see. I know my niece likes to have adventure. There's been uh, a large influx of the Compass Rose just kind of passing through the eastern side to the southeast coastline. I don't know what they want, and I don't talk to them. But if you wish to speak to some of them, uh, there should be a large contingency of Compass Roses to that coast. PJ, do I know about the Compass Roses? Or is this a uh, new term for me? Oh no! You know, you know about the Order of the Compass okay, Rose. Okay. They're they're the big globe trotters that try to learn about the past and solve all the problems and 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 dive into dungeons. And they're also the ones Gross. that got killed in Daltonshire. Gross! I just want to make sure Shionabis knew that. Got like it. she knows of this company. Cool. Um, headed to the east. Uh yes, to the southeast coast specifically. Mm, that's weird, right? And is this just recently? Like, do they just come in waves? Yes, the past couple of months they have sent relief and more units for an investigation or, uh, uh, what's the word looking for? Excavation off the coastline. You know what they're excavating? Yes. No idea what they're excavating, sorry. Uh, my, my guess would be, judging by the location and the numbers, I think it might have to do with the, uh, Dead Dragon Castle that landed there about a year ago. No one's gone in there and checked it out. Hmm. You know, that would make sense. That would make a lot of sense. Yes. Mm. Well, if there's anything else you need, I'm about to have tea. No, I think that's, I think that's it. Can we just chat and have tea for a little bit? Like, is that okay? Like, are you doing anything? I'm here with my partner. We're about to sit on the back patio and have tea. Would you like to join us? Do I know their partner? I believe so. Yeah, I want to say you know them. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll stay for a cup of tea. All right. And as you go to the beautiful backyard patio that overlooks one of the one of the many running rivers that's just gorgeous, share it with some lovely tea. This is where we're going to end episode 41, season 2 of Edge of Legend. It was kind of nice to go back to one of the places where it all started. Um, but let us say goodbye, starting with Sydney. And I'll be right back. Tell oh. them who you are and where they can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Oh, hello. My name is Sydney Rubino. You can find me all over the internet at Sydney Rubino. That's Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Um, Twitter while still alive. Um, when I'm not here with these amazing people on Wednesday nights, you'll find me um, Friday nights on Q Times at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm on a show with Wes and Randy and a few other amazing people called Grave Haven. Um, yep, you should check it out if you like Southern Gothic campaigns and if you like Wes, Randy, and I. Um, we have also a really cool dynamic over there too. So come check us out over there. It's a little, it's a little spoopy. It's a little horror. It's a little, it's a little funny because I don't think Wes, Randy, and I can be on a stream without it being a little funny. Yeah, that's um, accurate. <laughs> yeah, I remember when Finn was when we were asking Finn like, "What's the tone?" <laughs> and he was like, "Oh, you know, like this. We want this to be like very, like you know, it's a very dark um, world. So you know, we're going to be dealing with serious subjects." And we were like, "Cool, cool, 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 cool." But like, <laughs> but, but like, <laughs> yeah. Oops. <laughs> so yes, everyone's thirsty for um, Wes's character. Who's surprised? No one. <laughs> no one's surprised. And I have a cat. <laughs> and they have a cat named Tobias. Yep. <laughs> it's an undead bat cat. Oh my god. <laughs> it's awesome. It's great. Very adorable. And other people that you've seen on the show, like Aki and Zach, um, who you've seen on like one shots and things like that on the channel, they're on there too. So it's a bunch of really cool people. Finn actually was on an episode of Daltonshire. Um, so yeah, I'm just basically riffing until PJ gets back. Um, yeah, I don't know fair. if I should call on anybody else. I'd say just, just popcorn. Popcorn, yeah. Okay, popcorn. Kylie! Hi, I'm Kylie, or I go by Kylie. It really doesn't matter at this point. You can find me at Kylie's Wonderful Life all over the internet. Instagram, Instagram. Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, maybe, who knows for how long. Uh, when I'm not here, I'm nowhere. This is where I am currently. <laughs> uh, I have a show coming sometime in the new year. 
Uh, keep a lookout for that. I will be with Alec the Bard, Odin's son, and a bunch of other creators that I love. I uh, yeah, that's that's it. Excellent. Okay, so I know I got Sydney, and I know I came into Kylie. Has Sam gone? Nope. Nope. Hello. Sam. Yes. Please tell us who you are and where we can find you. That's sweet, sweet internet. It's me. It's Sam. I'm on the internet at Hey Sam Sterling on all the internets everywhere. Um, also, you can find me here with my Squishmallows, um, having a good time, uh, and also uh, on a few other things coming up. So just keep an eye on Twitter. I'll post there when I do things. Yeah. Very nice. Well, next up, uh, Wes. All right. Please Hi. tell us who you are. Uh, oh yeah. Hi Hello, you... everybody. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't do it yet. But look, I have no hands. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to this Come on, no hands. Uh, yeah, I'm Wes Johnson uh, at Wes underscore IRL on most social media platforms. Uh, at Wes Johnson on Hive. But uh, yeah, uh, like Sydney said, I'm part of Gravehaven with uh, with her and Randy. It's a lot of fun as well. It's definitely a little darker than uh, than Edge of Legend, but I love both of these shows so much. So thank you so much for uh, the PJ. For being an amazing DM and, and creating this whole world, it's been an awesome. It's been absolutely amazing to play it. Thank you so much. Ah, <sighs> well, sorry, everyone. I had to step away for a little bit. Uh, my name is PJ McGaw. You can find me all over the internet at PJ McGaw, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I wish I could say Hive. I have not been able to log on for a week. I have no idea what's going on. Uh, when I'm here with these amazing legends, you can find me here Monday nights, 8 to 11, same nat time, same nat channel for Wayward Arcadium as your favorite school students just try to just finish up college while they're escaping the grasp of a time god vampire lord. You know, like you do in college. Uh, so come to the end of that. I believe we only have about four episodes left in the season. Um... And also a big heads up looks at notes. We are going to be going dark here for the holidays, a nice holiday hiatus so we can kind of breathe starting. I'm going to get this right. Yes, I am because I'm so good. Starting, according to my notes, Monday, December 19th, Monday, December 19th. And we're going to be going until January Monday the 9th. So we have at least one more show. Uh, and that will probably be the last show of 2022. Yes. Uh, um, but Wayward will be having an episode on the 9th. We will, oh, Wayward will be having an episode on the 9th. Cool, good to know. Yes. All right. So there you go. We're going to be on break. And before I go, I also want to say uh, uh, this Friday, so two days from now, uh, please look for me at... I believe the Bard's Playhouse on Twitch as we do a Jasper Holiday one shot. I'm really excited for it. It's going to be 4 to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to raise money for Jasper's Game Day, which is for suicide prevention and resources. And I'm going to be running a Witcher one shot called Throw a Coin to Your Hunter because technically Paizo does not own Witcher and we don't want to get sued. But come join us. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, I'm looking forward to DM it again. And that's happening this Friday, 4 to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So until then, uh, um, hopefully... Um, what? You know what else is this weekend? Yes. PJ's birthday is on Sunday. So we would like to take this time to sing a very bad Zoom birthday to PJ, our <laughs> wonderful GM, <laughs> owner of Edge of Legend, all-around great friend and great person. So one, two, we're going to try and do this. Three. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear PJ. Happy birthday. Really the greatest gift <laughs> thank you so much everyone that's right uh this week is my birthday and it is always a pleasure to spend this time with you all so i'm looking forward to uh, seeing you again um before i get all emotional and babbly a little too late in that last one 
Uh, hopefully, I can give you more announcements when I can in the new year. And uh, we have one more next week. So I'll say Happy New Year for that. Until then, let's start rating. Um, well, I'm going to be rating the Hero Zone. Uh, what should our rating cry be? Happy birthday, PJ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll make it happy birthday, PJ. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you, of course, for uh, being our TD. Thank you to all my players, and thank you to everyone in the chat. You, you know, without you legends, we couldn't be doing this. So without further ado, let's go rating in three, two, one.